what's up? Welcome, ladies and gents, to the Four Flies Bitcoin Halving live stream. Welcome, welcome, welcome. As usual, ladies and gents, give me a mic check, an audio check, and a visual check. Ladies and gents, I want to give a huge thank you to everybody for smashing those likes up before the stream. Uh, we have like 120 people pre-stream here. So first of all, shout out to those of you that are celebrating this halving with me here on the live stream. I know you've all got beautiful places to be, but you're choosing here. Good choice. Uh, I have got so much I want to cover with you. 120 people pre-streaming. We already smashed it up to 40 likes, which is a pretty phenomenal um pretty pretty phenomenal ratio there i think so that is absolutely amazing thank you all very very much um all good 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 just gonna make sure that everything is all good from my side here this is an exciting one isn't it this is a very very exciting one i have so much prepped for you all in this live stream there's i've literally never done more prep for a live stream in my life and we do a lot of prep for live streams. You guys don't see it. You see casual Sammy in his little office. Six monitors behind me. You see a little shisha pipe. It looks all chill, but I'm very excited for this one. We're going to be covering some very, very exciting stuff. And guys, um, full disclosure, got Peter K from New York. Shout out to you. I can't say your name. And Enhancer or something like that. Liked. I got you, dog. Thank you so much, dude. Sergio, shout out, second halving. We'll be edging a lawn, right? Okay, I thought I read that wrong. But uh, we got the pipe, we're ready. It's 3 a.m. here in Dubai, so I'm probably feeling a lot more chill than the rest of you, but I'm still here. Look at that. An hour and 15. An hour and 15 minutes until the next halving. In fact, we're on mempool.space right now. Like I said, ladies and gents, I've got so much TA to cover with you all, but I want to set the stage for this live stream right now. We've got mempool.space up on screen right now. And this block right here, this flashing little block right here, is the 840, 40th thousand block for Bitcoin. That is the block where the halving takes place. If you are excited for this live stream, do me a favor and smash those likes up. Let me give you a little sneak peek at what we've got for you all. Some of the previous halvings, the implications, the time it took to rally up, the kind of immediate setbacks, immediate pumps that we saw after the halvings, the press reactions. We've got a lot of the press reactions, including the current day press reactions right here. Is, it, is this the one? Yes, it is. Yeah, April 19. So there is a lot we've got. And this is like half of the notes. Um, half of the charts and stuff I want to show you. There is a lot more. I might even have a guest for you all today in this live stream. <clears throat> I might even have a guest for you all in this live stream. A very competent trader, very good friend of mine, a very good friend of mine. Um, he may be joining us a little bit later on. Shisha got banned in your country. Which country are you in, bro? Are you in Singapore? Ladies and gents, as you are coming in, do me a favor and smash those likes up for this Bitcoin halving live stream. Coming at you live at 3 a.m. in Dubai. Take a look at the Bitcoin price here. We are sitting quite happy at $63,000. What a daily candle, by the way. This daily candle is very nearly over. This daily candle, by sheer coincidence, by sheer coincidence, depending on the time zone you're in, Bitcoin halving will take place on 420 if you use the incorrect date format in the United States, 420. And the daily candle closes right before that block as well. So that is definitely very cool. All eyes are on this at the moment. Half, half of crypto Twitter, crypto YouTube, maybe more than half, is out here in Dubai right now. Um, so we're, we're on the 420. Uh, date right now is the flood done in Dubai mostly mostly done yeah there are still some parts that are quite flooded it was actually quite tense I took my Porsche out a couple days ago and I was just driving right through water I was like this is a 
bloody horrible idea, but um, everything's fine. It's a Volkswagen, so it survived. So thank you all very much for smashing those likes up. Let me uh, let me start getting into the getting into the source here for this live stream. Obviously, we're all here today to talk about the Bitcoin halving, but what we have that's very very important to talk about on this particular YouTube channel are the price action implication implications. Okay. Um, I love the Bitcoin tech. I understand it fairly well, but I'm more interested in the money side of things. I'm very upfront with you all about that. It's not something that I feel shame about saying. We're all on the same page. I'm just saying it. Uh, and, and because of that, there's a lot of very interesting stuff to talk about with regards to that price action stuff. So as we're going in to this live stream, remember to smash up those likes if you're excited. Someone's just asked how long until the halving. We've got conflicting information on that. The blocks have started to go a little bit faster, uh, but we've got about one hour. And of course, we're going to be live through that. That last block has just gone through. The halving block is now seven blocks away, roughly 68 minutes. So again, about just over an hour away. And that right there, this is the first block that Bitcoin is going to do with the brand new reward. Bitcoin at the moment is paying out 6.2. 2.5 BTC per uh, per block. Uh, that is the reward for mining the block. 6.25. You can see that right down here. Block halving events happen every four years or 210,000 blocks on the Bitcoin blockchain. Bitcoin's initial block reward was 50 Bitcoins. 50 Bitcoins to whoever mined the block. The current block reward is 6.25 and the next block reward will be 3.125 BTC per block. This lowers the rate at which Bitcoins are generated. The reason that this is a big deal is because this is the only mechanism where inflation exists for Bitcoin. Yeah? With the US dollar, with every currency, dollars, pounds, euros are printed at the whim of a human. Yeah? Whatever a human thinks, whatever a private entity, if you're the US dollar, thinks, uh, that's what's happening. With Bitcoin... It's very transparent. It's what you see right here. And its inflation rate will cut in half tonight, within an hour, within just over an hour. So that's why it's absolutely huge. That's why it's a really big deal. I want to remind you all as you're tuning in here, 3 a.m. here in Dubai. I'm a little bit more chill than the rest of you, so I got the pipe here. Uh, but let me uh, let me get into these charts for you. because And I, and I just want to get straight into it, right? In fact, uh should we, should we get into the charts first or should we should we look at the uh should we look at the immediate short-term price action should we look at the long-term charts or the short-term price action what do you guys want to start with let me know in the comment section in the live chat down below i want to go with whatever you guys are looking at oh man you guys are uh, really enjoying the date here um in the live chat great to see you thanks for the live stream you're very very welcome geo rider stewtube what's up <laughs> uh, lots of live chat comments here. Absolutely beautiful. What are we starting with? Are we starting with the uh, the long term or the short term charts? It's very mixed right now. Lots of shorts. Lots of short term people. Start short and long. I'm leaning towards short and long. Yeah, it looks like most of you guys are seeing sh are saying short term as well. What's the pipe loaded with? We've got some UK tobacco flavors here, Black Mamba and Frozen Smurf. UK tobacco is the best. Yeah, let's get into the short term first, because once I start the long term analysis, I won't stop. <laughs> and there is a lot. Most of it is long term analysis here. So I think I'm with you guys. I think we should start with that stuff first. Uh, so let's get into that. So let's start off here. On the daily time frame, uh, let's move this to here because this is where the halving will happen. This is the uh, the vertical line representing the halving. Um, and we are continuing to trade sideways. We have continued to trade sideways here. We've completely fallen out of this pattern, by the way. Um, where is my beautiful sideways box? Yeah, I don't actually have it on the chart anymore. Um, we'll just put another nice little box up top here. And we are still in our sideways trading range. So that's great. That's very, very good news. Uh, we haven't broken market structure. 
we have shown a lot of weakness and you know about that you've been hearing me talk about that on this youtube channel uh for quite some time uh that we have got nice big uh you know bounces off this level uh but we are responding with much more weakness this time and again very very clearly but for those of you who maybe missed it shout out to those of you that are subscribed because you wouldn't have missed it um we did see big reactions and quick reactions off this support level before this time not only did we not see a big reaction it's also well yeah not only did we not see a quick reaction it's also not been a big reaction uh previously when we bounced off this level it took an entire 15 days 16 days to get back down to the same box on this occasion here it took five days after that it took three days okay so we have very clearly gotten weaker uh that's what our immediate and i'm ignoring the halving right now we're going to get to that in just a second but we've very clearly gotten weaker with this price action yeah we were previously producing nice big bounces we weren't returning back to the same level for some time this time very quickly we're coming back down to the same level and we're not getting as high previously the same day or the, the you know the next few days we were up to seventy thousand dollars i mean that's like a solid like twelve thirteen thousand dollar move potentially depending on like where you're drawing it from but i mean like eleven thousand dollar move here huge on this occasion here i mean the same day uh you know we're, we're back up to 60 what is this sixty eight thousand dollars uh the very same day you know up by about eight thousand dollars off this low so uh you know on this occasion here we're really not matching that you know two days later we're up by six and a half but then we're back down um so very very clearly showing weakness on this chart we've also lost our daily ema support we're now trading under it although we do have our daily ichimoku support which has been keeping the price higher it lines up with horizontal support it is of course our ichimoku support these are good signs that is exactly what you want to be seeing at this stage in the market you want to be seeing that if our emas are failing at least the ichimoku is still working yeah and that is a very very good sign in this market um if we zoom in even further we have resistance up ahead of where we are right now we've been able to develop this resistance because we've been trending down for the last little bit like over the last kind of two three weeks we've been trending down uh so so that's why we were able to develop some resistance there ema resistance not super useful but actually I, I i eat my words actually we did find pretty good resistance right there just now uh and we are continuing to trend back down so if we manage to fall back down to this price area it's going to be the fourth consecutive test within a space of about a week just over a week yeah uh assuming it happens soon so I don't know if it's going to hold. I'm not expecting it to hold. Uh, the S&P 500 has continued to slide down. Uh, yesterday, today, whatever, based on your time zone, was the final day of trading for the S&P 500. This index is now closed for the next two and a half days. And we have now, from our all-time high down to our low today, fallen by 5.9%. So again, that is the biggest correction the S&P 500 has had since this correction started here in july of 23 july yeah we're in april now so uh it, it has been nine months since we've uh since we began a correction uh well from, from today uh very very long time uh in between the corrections were very shallow we know all about this we've been talking about this very regularly so this is still looking like it's gonna get weaker the dollar on the other hand is looking pretty strong the dollar is looking like it may even continue to rise up it is at resistance so you know we'll talk about that a little bit we have a lot left to talk about um on this note we've got seven blocks left until the halving absolutely amazing stuff here that's one two three four five six blocks actually left until the halving here uh not seven my bad we've got yeah just over an hour that we're predicting for the halving here so that is absolutely sick if you guys are finding this live stream informative so far if you're hyped up for what's going to come like i said the most researched live stream i've ever done on youtube i'm super hyped up for it do me a favor and smash those likes up i do not have a bedtime it's 3 20 here in dubai uh and i am on for as long as we are firing off on this live stream so if you're excited for this do me a favor and smash those likes up while you're down there, take advantage of the beautiful offers available to you. The links in the description below when you start trading are going to give you huge bonuses. 
Bybit will give you up to 30k in free trading capital that you can deploy into the market. Any profits you generate are yours to keep. Bingx is a no KYC alternative, no pictures of yourself, no pictures of your ID, and they're going to give you over $100,000 in bonuses as well. You can get these bonuses when you start trading using these links below. Uh, there's also a cool uh, little campaign that Bybit is running where uh, a lucky 10 of you who start trading now um, with a very low minimum volume requirement, you're going to get a uh, an, an extra $50 deposited into your account of just free money that you can trade with. Uh, so super, super cool stuff over there as well. We've got India here in this live stream. God, what, what time is it in India? It's like, how many time zones are in India? It's like 5 a.m. there or something. Nice one. Congratulations. That's, that's dedication. This is dedication out here too in Dubai. Super cool stuff. So check out these very, very cool bonuses if you're curious. Make sure you've liked the live stream. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. And uh, let's come back to the short-term analysis. Let me wrap this up. I'm going to keep it relatively short. We'll keep coming back to it, obviously. We got the price charts right in front of us. We're going to be talking about it in case something interesting happens right at the live, uh, at the halving. Obviously, this is the most uh, famous halving Bitcoin has ever had. It's never had more attention. It's you know within a bull market. A lot of people have got their eyes on it. Uh, so definitely a very, very interesting time. We could see some interesting price action. Uh, like I said, if we manage to revisit these lows, I think we collapse below them. If we lose this floor at 63K, I think we collapse down to the floor. And then I think it's further Dumpsville from there. Might not happen immediately, but I think it would happen fairly quickly. Um, we did manage to break above some of these local highs. We didn't get above this one here at 66, but we did get above this high at 64, which was absolutely great. Interestingly, this actually happened after a development in the regional conflicts here in the Middle East. Um, and, and then Bitcoin just decided to pump in response to it. So that was interesting. Not really what I expected. We did manage to break that high. If we find support here, the next area of resistance is going to be the high 65s. And beyond that, the real resistance is at 68. This is the real level that we've got to break. If we break this level, we're good. If we don't break this level, we may be in a bit of trouble so that is something i'm going to be paying attention to uh on the upside for the downside i think you know we're still kind of positioned to drop lower uh altcoins are looking horrible uh and i think they will continue to get worse uh as time goes on but that is something we will touch on and look at uh as this live stream goes on uh so ladies and gents if you are excited for it while we are starting this stream up let's smash those likes up and let's start talking about some of the previous lives, uh, the previous halvings that Bitcoin had. This is what I think is very interesting because you guys actually already know my thoughts. I actually didn't really even care about doing a halving live stream because to me, this is a non event. Uh, I said that to you before. I'm proudly saying it to you now with a smile on this live stream, even though I'm live and I'm live just for the hype of it, just because it's fun. Uh, you know, but. We don't actually see interesting stuff happening immediately before and after the halving. We have our halving sandwiches. Either side of the halving on the immediate time frames, nothing happens to the chart. And that's what I believe is going to happen again over here. Um, if we take a look at our previous halvings, here is the very first halving that Bitcoin produced. This was in November of 2012. And what we had back here was a $12 Bitcoin. Here's the chart. We had a $12 Bitcoin here. The halving took place. And again, you can see we're on the daily time frame on this chart. Let me zoom in a little bit. Right there. We're on the, tw uh, we're on the one day immediately before the halving. It's almost exactly like what we've experienced recently. There is an immediate price drop. Nothing happens after the halving. And then things start getting interesting afterwards. I don't want to focus too much on this first halving here. And by the way, there's only a few halvings on this chart here. So, uh, you know, we're not going to be spending too much time on this. And ladies and gents, as we go on, just let me know if the connection is good. I'm getting a small connection error on my side. It's only small. Just just let me know if everything's good on your side or if you have a problem. Um, I don't want to spend too much time on this, but let's go through it anyway, because there's only a few of them. Uh, we did start to see Bitcoin moving up after the halving here. And yeah, it wasn't immediate, but it was fairly quick. If we take a look at this chart here, this is the second halving. This is what took place in 2016. And it's actually marked 
with this vertical line right here, okay? 9th July 2016, roughly around where that halving was. And what you can see right before that halving was a really nice big rally into the halving, so similar to what we have right now, and then a pullback, so similar to what we have right now. Nothing really happens, yeah? We can see that on this chart right here. Nothing really happens after the halving. We move up a little bit, but then we move back down, and now we actually see a pretty sizable drop. Then we get a 28% drop on the chart here from the 660 level down to the 470 level and it's actually a very important level for the chart in my opinion because if we go back and take a look at that exact drop um right here what you'll notice let me just slap this on the logarithmic so it's easy to see what you'll notice yeah this is the drop is if we manage to drop a horizontal line this was actually a very important price level that bitcoin back tested we saw candle closes here. We saw consolidation here. We saw important support. Major, 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 major rejections along this level. And then a back test. Uh, and, and what that tells us is that according to this particular halving, it's just business as usual. We do move up ever so slightly after the halving. We move back down and then we get a bigger drop. And we're getting a bigger drop down to a critical area on the chart, which previously acted as support and as resistance. And for the first time after breaking back above the level, we managed to get the back test. Very normal price action for Bitcoin. Very healthy price action for Bitcoin. If you're paying attention and you understand technical charts, you're going to buy this level. You're going to buy this level because that is a back test of a previous area of resistance that Bitcoin was making pretty good use of. Yeah, every time we hit this rough price area, the price got rejected. Initially, the rejections were strong. Then they got a little bit weaker, and then weaker still, and then almost no rejection. This has got to be ringing bells for you guys. It's been the number one theme we've been discussing on this YouTube channel over the last weeks and even months. It's actually something that we talk about on this channel a lot. Those of you that are subscribed, you're going to be very well attuned to that. We typically get very comfortable at support or resistance levels when we are about to break them. Again, just because I want to show you how this could work out in the real doesn't mean it's going to happen, but it could work out like this in the real world. We've got the same setup. At this exact same price area, we were previously bouncing off very quickly. Now, not very quickly at all. Not only are we not bouncing up quickly, we're not bouncing up with much strength. You can see it even more clearly on the four hour here. Take a look at this. This is the exact same price level. Nice big bounces, taking the price nice and high very quickly. On this occasion, we're just floating around the same, you know I mean, before. And, and the biggest tell of this, the biggest tell of this is that it took a long time to revisit this low before. And this time, only a matter of a few days. Uh, we're clearly revisiting this level more often and when that happened as resistance, that's how we broke resistance. Um, so it's good news because if we manage to get back up to the top of this range, the same thing's going to happen. I don't think this level is going to be strong resistance either. Uh, you know, because we've been testing it so much, these levels do tend to get weaker. That's a key part of technical analysis theory. Uh, and so naturally, I'd expect that level to break and we start setting all-time highs. The more of a correction we have before that happens, the bigger our subsequent rally would probably be. This was proven to us very clearly by this particular price range here, stretching between 25k and 30k, where Bitcoin traded sideways for an extended period of time, about seven months here, 226 days, right into a massive breakout. Yeah, that's happening as a result of long-term consolidation. The longer consolidation we get, the better it tends to fare for the market. Where are we at with these blocks here? Still got six blocks left until the halving. So we are counting down on this live stream. Absolutely amazing stuff here. Less than an hour to go according to the nice hash on this website here. We are at block 839,994. Our target is 840,000. So we're not too far away right now. Super exciting stuff. If you're pumped up for this, smash those likes up, ladies and gents. Very, very cool indeed to be doing this with you all live on stream. We're going to be seeing how the halving um, is treated 
by the Bitcoin traders and, and market here. We're obviously taking a very sober price action analysis, analysis vibe direction uh, approach in this live stream. So let's bring it back to this chart now and talk more about what happened with these halvings. Uh, we saw very, very similar conditions. We had a move up, a little bit of sideways trading. You can see that super clearly on this chart right here. We had the move up, a little bit of sideways trading, uh, you know, another move up, and then, uh, and, and then, you know, and then we just, you know, we blast off. It's, uh, it, 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 it just, it absolutely takes off from there. Now, what's interesting is that to break this level that Bitcoin was trading at, at the date of the halving, it took 107 days. 107 days. Bitcoin was trading at about $660. Yes, we briefly got above it, but the real break, the break which, you know, Bitcoin never came back down to this level afterwards. Like, I mean, everything on this chart is history from this point. We never revisited these price levels ever again, ever. It happened 107 days later. That's where it kicked off. 107 days later. Um, I think that tells us a lot. Uh, if we take a look at the news, it was relatively neutral. Uh, you know, th there's there's a lot. You can definitely go back and check this. Obviously, we're on Wayback Machine right here. Super normal, a little bit of fun, a little bit of excitement, nothing particularly crazy. So, you know, not the most groundbreaking, earth-shattering event from a press media perspective for this halving. Not the craziest thing in the world. After the halving, things were a little bit different. After the halving, things got a lot more fun. And we actually saw a 2,900% rise from that uh, breakout level to our all-time high in 2017, where Bitcoin managed to get up to $20,000. It managed to rise up by $19,200 roughly. It went up by about 3,000%. And it happened within about 525 days. So things were very different after that halving. This is where stuff gets very exciting. We had the minus, um, let's take a look at this on this chart again. We had the minus 16% pre-halving dump. We had the minus 28% post-halving dump. So this is the dump that happened before the halving. This is the dump that happened after the halving. If we just bring it back to the current day chart and take a look at what this is showing us, you know, we do have similar things taking place on this chart right now. We've got a 17% dump here, yeah? Before the halving, 16% dump. You know what I mean? So so there's there's definitely something here. Um it actually goes significantly lower than that. Uh and you know, we've we've just been trading sideways straight into the halving. So again, same thing, just trading sideways straight into the halving. Uh the next thing that happened was the explosion uh that really put Bitcoin on the map. And by the way, for those of you that are curious, I joined the Bitcoin market about over here, around March of 2017. Maybe a little bit after that, actually. I can't remember. It was somewhere around here. I think I was here for this dip. I must have joined, like, around this dip. Um, so so that, was, that was the second halving. There's only one more halving for me to cover uh, for the historic analysis for Bitcoin's halvings. That third halving is... Uh, not this one. It is this one here. This was directly after the March, down here, the March coronavirus market crash of 2020. We had the coronavirus market, uh, coronavirus um, pandemic hit the world, everyone was super scared, countries going into lockdown, stock markets sold off, people were not feeling positive or excited about any markets, Bitcoin sold off too. Bitcoin failed as being a safe haven. It's worth being honest about these things on Bitcoin's halving here. Uh, not its birthday, you could say its name day. Uh, it's worth being honest about these things because, uh, well, this is just the reality of the market, isn't it? This is, this is just a reality of the market. We saw people get scared in the global markets and that fear hit Bitcoin very hard. Bitcoin went from a high of around $10,000 to a low of around, on this chart, it's 4200 is it? No, it's 3,800. And depending on which exchange you're looking at, it, it's going to be, you know, roughly around the same levels. So big, big drop happening here in response to global panic, clearly not being used as a safe haven 
of any sort. Very important to ground ourselves with that knowledge, yeah? So that we've got very reasonable expectations of what might happen to Bitcoin in crisis situations in the future and even what we've seen recently. Because when things started to get a little bit shaky in the Middle East with the regional conflicts here, we saw Bitcoin sell-offs. Bitcoin is still behaving in the same way. But let's talk about this halving. The price at this halving was around $8,600. It came in right after the COVID dump. And yeah, that might have skewed the chart a little bit. Uh, but if we do look at the actual halving, nothing happening. There was a small drop right before the halving here. Nothing crazy, small drop. Uh, it took us down by about 19%, the, about a $1,900 uh, drop here. Uh, and we then started to move up in the days following the halving, but we were sideways for a long time. We were sideways for a long time after that halving. That was it. Nothing happened. We traded completely sideways. We did get a small pump up, uh, but if we start to put these things in perspective here, it took 76 days from the point of the halving until we started to rally up. 76 days until we started to rally up. That's a very important chart because if we take a look at what this might mean for Bitcoin now on this chart, if we're looking at about 76 days now, that does put us in early July. That does put us in early July if we see the same 76 days of consolidation. If that ends up happening, that's going to mean we entered this range in March. We exit the range in July. Four months, five months total if you include March as well of sideways ranging. Definitely not ideal, but it is what it is. It's going to mean that we have really nice upside. Again, that's what I was saying a little bit earlier on in this live stream. We got paid for all of this nasty price action here where nothing happened for seven months. And we got paid very well. There was a nice big rally after this halving. Uh, I'm sorry, after this consolidation. So don't be too upset if the same thing happens again. Actually, what I think it would mean is phenomenal opportunities for the altcoin markets. And again, we're going to touch on that as well a little bit later on in this live stream. Let's take a look at the uh, Bitcoin blocks here. Where are we at? Still six blocks left by the looks of it. Yeah, we haven't mined this next block yet. Once this block goes down, there will only be five blocks left. And then the Bitcoin reward per block cuts in half. Uh, again, just to recap for those of you that are tuning in, this is Bitcoin's only mechanism for inflation. People do not get to decide when this happens. This is how Bitcoin has been programmed. It's visible to everybody. It's very transparent. The initial block reward is 50 and it's halved and halved and halved since then. Now down to 6.25 BTC per block. This is the reward that miners get, people that use their computers to do the complex math equations for Bitcoin transactions. This is the reward they get for allocating their computer power, their money to the Bitcoin mining network. Um, this is the reward and it's going to cut in half. So that is Bitcoin's form of inflation. Am I in Dubai? Am I from Dubai? No, sir, I'm not from Dubai. I am in Dubai. Uh, I'm from the UK, from London. Uh, but yes, now out here in Dubai, it is 3.30 a.m. We're live here on YouTube. Shout out to those of you across the world that are tuning in. Smash up those likes if you are finding this live stream informative so far. Uh, we are very, very nearly up to the present day for the halving. This is super, super interesting stuff. And let's come back to this chart here. Because what we saw after the halving was a 76-day waiting time. It called it about two and a half months with a 35% pump to the upside. Bitcoin moved up by 35%. And then it took 162 days to really start kicking off the bull market. So that to me was absolutely huge. Uh, you know, that tells us that it took a long time for things to start kicking off in this market. Again, it's exactly the same image that we saw from the first halving. There was after, you know, a few days, call it a week, things start to get exciting again. And then we're sideways again for, again, a few months, really. Uh, you know, going into, it looks like, you know, kind of late January, uh, mid-January, when things start to get exciting again. And that's when 
this uh, market started trending up back for the first ever halving that Bitcoin produced. For 2016, very much the same image. The halving happened, but we didn't actually exceed that price level for 107 days. It took about three months. Uh, guys, let me know if the shisha gets annoying. I will stop if you don't want me to. Uh, but like I said, I'm super chill right now. We're just here. I don't know how long this live stream is going to go on for. So uh, I'm honestly just doing this much more laid back. But but if this is annoying, I will not do it. It's it's okay. Uh, I, I can wait. But, um, you know, I... If, if you guys don't seem to care, then I don't care. So, you know, that's um, that's that's why I do it. Uh, so I do want you to let me know uh, in the live chat. One one person was unhappy about it. Um, so lots of nothing happening for about 107 days after that halving. Uh, and again, 162 days until we really started to uh, rally up. Um, so, so very, very long time. It was about, you know, it was five and a half months, five and a half months until something interested happening here, uh, interested started to happen here. And again, on this chart here, we're looking at about another two and a half months. So, um, so, so that's important. Um, what flavor is the shisha? Yeah. Black Mamba frozen Smurf from the UK, mate. Absolutely sick. Yeah. You guys seem to, you guys seem to be pretty cool with it. So, you know, I'm, I'm cool with it. Like I said, I'm, you know, you guys know me. I'm a super, I'm, I'm, I'm like you guys. I'm a super casual, normal person, you know? So, um, we'll keep it for a little bit. But, um, yeah, that's, that's what we saw, uh, from 2020. Uh, slightly more zoomed out perspective. It's actually the same chart here. Let's take a look at this from a press perspective. Um, actually, first of all, on the day of the halving, we see that, you know, Bitcoin dump 10% in 30 minutes. Coinbase experienced a brief out. You guys remember this? Coinbase going out every two seconds uh, with, with all the Bitcoin price action. Let me know in the live chat if you guys remember uh, Coinbase going down all the time. Uh, that stuff was super interesting. Uh, every time you wanted to do something, move money around, the network was too clogged up. You couldn't fucking send your money anywhere. Coinbase was going down. Everything was going down. It was, um, <laughs> yeah, it was... It was quite crazy. Um, you're, someone's saying make some smoke rings. I actually can't do smoke rings. I'm, I've never actually bothered to learn. I'm, I'm literally just here to smoke the shishi. Like I don't, I don't actually. It, it, it's actually kind of hard by the looks of it. I don't know. I'd like to try shisha. It's tasty. It's, it's cool. You know. I mean, you stay sober when you do it. So I think that's why it's, it's nice. You know, like a, a lot of other vices, you have to use a drug and you know, something will hit your brain. But this is, this is like a cigar. So that's actually pretty nice. Similar situation now. We've seen a big dump just before the halving. And if we take a look at the, the press reaction to the halving, uh, again, a whole bunch of nothing. Uh, you know, largely, you know, still neutral. Uh, nothing really, you know, polarized here. Uh, turns out to be a non-event. You know, the, the, the sentiment is that the halving was priced in. And, you know, I think to an extent, you can definitely say that that's the case. Uh, again, if you look back at this chart and look at the way Bitcoin responded going into this halving, there was already a huge move up. Again, you can't say that this move up was because of the halving alone because we did just dump by, down by about 68% or 62 or whatever, like a, a massive number. And it was within like two, three months. So you can't attribute this purely to the halving. Obviously, I think a big part of this particular rally up was just a reaction to a very very scared market from covid yeah this was a true black swan everyone's quick to say black swan these days we don't actually get that many black swans they won't be black swans if you get them often but this was a true black swan and we were just having the recovery afterwards so i don't even think that this was because of the halving but if you want to say the halving was priced in because you know we already know on this channel especially we're not interested in the news headlines we're not even interested in the halving dates uh, what we're most interested in is the display of psychology. I think it's quite obvious that when you get a big dump like this, you have to expect some level of a reaction rally. Yeah. And you don't know how high that reaction rally can go necessarily. But if we look back at the chart, when this reaction actually started to happen, the writing was on the wall. Let me draw a couple of lines for you and show you why I'm saying that. Look at that right there. 
Bitcoin loves its ascending triangles. Bitcoin loves its descending triangles. It loves these triangles. We printed one right here. We did see a brief breakout here and another brief breakout here. Neither of them manifested in big moves up here, but that third attempt was the one. And what you can see quite clearly is we're punching in higher lows in this market, keeping relatively the same ceiling, and then we're managing to move up. Again, this is a very common uh, pattern for Bitcoin to be forming, and it does it upside down too. Here is a descending triangle. Bitcoin loves these patterns. Our highs keep getting lower, and we maintain the same floor. Very typical price action within these kinds of markets. We've got something similar happening here in 2018. Another move that I actually traded here, uh, even with VIP members back then, same setup. You're hitting the same resistance level, continuously getting lower highs in the market, holding the same floor, and then you're collapsing. Traded this move here. That wasn't enough, so I traded the next move up as well. That was all very, very public here on the YouTube channel. We've been around for a solid minute. If you are enjoying this content, ladies and gents, smash those likes up. And while you are down there, take advantage of the huge offers available to you when you start trading using these links. You will get all of this free capital deposited into your account, depending on how much you're trading with, as free trading capital that you can trade with. Any profit you generate are yours to withdraw. Bing X phenomenal no KYC alternative. They won't ask you for pictures of yourself or your ID, and you're going to get bonuses well over $100,000 um, with Bing X as well, which is super, super cool. Now, we get to the fun part. Halving four, the fourth halving for Bitcoin. Where are we, by the way? five blocks left we have five blocks left until the bitcoin halving takes place um absolutely huge stuff there five blocks we've got less than 50 minutes left according to this countdown here we don't actually have a countdown on this website which i think is potentially even better yeah we do it says 48 minutes so it's kind of lining up now they're all lining up the same um by the way, it was kind of hard for me to organize this live stream because I didn't know exactly when the halving was going to happen. And I was like, fuck, I might have to stay up until like 5 a.m. Uh, <laughs> in order to uh, deliver this live stream here. But, uh, you know, whatever it is, we're in for it. I don't actually mind. Um, Non-event at halving, but it's the start of parabolic. I completely agree. I completely agree with you guys here in the live chat. So much non-event headlines. I feel like we will be taken by surprise, manifesting a huge pump. That would be huge. That would be very, very cool. And if it happens, dude, we are here live on stream to watch it happen. Uh, let's move to the current price action here. We've got, again, a sideways trading range. We know this very, very well. If it takes, uh, you know, 76 days like it took Bitcoin before <clears throat> to start having a breakout, we are looking at very, very early July. And if we look at the news at this current moment it's exactly the same this article was published earlier today or yesterday depending on which time zone you're in this bitcoin halving is different but is it priced in we've got the exact same questions being asked here and actually some really good reason to be asking if this halving is priced in because for the first time bitcoin set an all-time high before the halving actually happened so you do have good reason if you're standing back and questioning this and asking, has the hype already exhausted itself? I've got a very interesting chart that I want to show you, which would potentially indicate that the answer is no, which might actually be surprising because you guys know me. You watch this channel. You're not here for the emotional thrills of being a trader and stuff like that. I'm not here for that. We don't care about that. We just want to make money. And so if we just want to make money, we're not attached to, you know, the big headlines and the crazy shit that other YouTubers and Twitter gurus say and stuff like that. We just don't care. But there is a very interesting chart that I want to show you, which I'm going to show you in just a few minutes here pertaining to this Bitcoin long term chart here. But again, if we take a look at what the media is saying right now, it's potentially already priced in. You know, we, we look at this. The four, um, let's, let's read this here. Institutions launching Bitcoin ETFs this year have buoyed the Bitcoin price to record level. Does that mean the impact of the halving could be relatively muted? The sentiment is very clear from this particular Coindesk article. We do have a, uh, a, a, a discussion of if things could be muted here. Uh, and by the way, the previous articles also Coindesk uh, that we were looking at here. 
even with the different logo back here in 2016. Um, so again, <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's very poetic. You know, history doesn't necessarily repeat, but it sure as hell rhymes. And that is very, very cool. Um, rewards dropping from 900 BTC per day down to 450, uh, creating a potential supply shock that could drive prices up. That's obviously the whole narrative here. So let me show you guys a, a, a very, very different chart now, something that I really don't look at particularly often. Uh, and it is a macro price prediction chart for Bitcoin here. This is using curved lines, which you guys know I do not like. Uh, and I'll show you why in just a little bit. Uh, ladies and gents, please continue to let me know if the um, connection is still good. I'm getting another small error here on my side, but hopefully it is all still good. Um, were my parents traders? No, sir. Neither of them were traders. I think they would actually be pretty bad traders. My dad actually might be a good trader. He's very patient. Um, but... Yeah, we've got this beautiful curved line here that Bitcoin has been trading in uh, inside of this channel. Uh, and one thing that's very interesting that I can show you on this chart here is the time it took after the halving for Bitcoin to reach its all-time high. On this occasion here, the first Bitcoin halving, it took 370 days for Bitcoin to peak and enter a large bear market. 300, we had a mini bear market here, not something I'm paying attention to. The real top for Bitcoin after this halving back in 2012 did take place. The real top did take place 370 days later. On this occasion here, 520 days later. On this occasion here, 320 days later. So roughly somewhere between 300 to 500 days. That's what we're looking at in terms of... Uh, the time it takes for Bitcoin to uh, set its high in the market. So if we're looking at something roughly in the middle of that, that puts us at, let's say, you know, just, just for fun on this chart, that puts us at about 413 days. And just very quickly, if I divide that by 30, that is 14 months away. Yeah, and that's, you know, it could be more, it could be less. It's probably, if anything, it's going to be more just because things are getting slower. Typically, that's what I would expect. Uh, you know, so maybe we're looking closer to that 18 month mark, but whatever the case is, historically, the number one thing that you can expect is that things will be crazy for a long time after the halving. It might be 370 days, it might be 500, it might be something in between, but it's a long time that we are expecting. Now, if we take a look at this chart here uh, for a potential price prediction, and we take a look at this chart here, you're going to see that it's very hard to draw where a potential uh you know top could be for the market and it also depends on how you draw these curved lines right if you draw the curved lines ever so slightly differently you're going to get a completely different narrative on the chart um, and it's why i don't like these kind of curved lines for analysis anybody who used these kind of curved lines for analysis to tell you something in any serious capacity is absolutely fully talking out of their ass do not trust anything they say they are not even trying to be objective with their analysis. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to look at it. I'm happy to you know talk about it as a thought experiment and stuff like that, but you'll never see me give it much screen time. I just don't think it's that important. Uh, you know, I think that what's much more important is just understanding the general direction, the general like idea, which in this case is that, you know, we're probably getting, you know, more muted as this coin desk article says, uh, and we're seeing, you know, less extreme price action each time here on the chart. Uh, if we take a slightly different look at uh, the halvings, we've seen how long it took to set the highs. Let's take a look at how high those peaks were. So on this occasion here, we've got a 10,200% pump. It takes 385 days, 10,200% pump. The next halving, we see a 3,000% pump. It takes 500 days, 3,000% pump. Bitcoin goes up by eighteen thousand dollars. Yeah, probably a lot more than that. This 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 looks wrong. And the next occasion after that, we get a seven hundred percent pump. So from the halving to the high, ten thousand percent, three thousand percent, seven hundred percent. Now, if we look at the hundred and you know, 50K, 120K, whatever, you know, it's very, very subjective. But if we look at these kind of targets for Bitcoin now, 
we're looking at about 130% pump from the halving day to the high. I know that this might sound a little bit disappointing. 700% pump is cool. 3,000% pump is very cool. 10,000% is, is just kind of hard to imagine. But we do know that this is getting less extreme and less volatile as time goes on. And if that continues to ring true, you know, this is a conservative look. And the reason I'm taking conservative looks, and by the way, we've got you guys talking about this in the live chat. We've got four blocks left until the halving here. Four blocks left. Very, very little time until we do produce that halving for Bitcoin. I'm actually getting kind of excited, I've got to admit. Now I'm getting slightly excited uh, about this halving. Do I think we might see a crash because of smart money liquidating longs because of the halving? Honestly, mate, uh, anything could happen here. Um, you know, I, I really wouldn't rule anything out. This is um, this is a very like um, hyped up event right now in this market. So I, I just would not rule anything out. I'm not expecting anything. I'm not expecting anything at all. Like, you know, maybe, maybe something interesting, you know, on the one minute time frame, maybe maybe like a two three percent move at most i'm not expecting anything but you can't rule anything out this one is is very very big in terms of media attention right now and just the people that are watching this so i wouldn't rule it out we've got uh asia beginning to wake up right now as well it's 4 a.m here in dubai so we've got beijing starting to wake up as well australia um even though they're upside down have started to wake up now as well uh so um you know, we, we, we've we've clearly got uh, a, a setup here where, you know, interesting things could start to happen. You know, North and South America are still awake. So there's definitely some potential, but um, I'm not I'm not betting on it. I, I just don't you know, I'm not I'm not I'm not putting my money down on that kind of idea right now. But, you know, that's why we're live. If it happens, it happens. It's going to be very, very fun to watch. Here's something really interesting. Here's something really interesting I want to show you. You know, the earlier idea that we were talking about is that, you know, Bitcoin has rallied up before it's halving. How do I think war and inflation affect this run? We'll come back to that a little bit later. That's a very big question. Um, how do I think, uh, sorry, not that. Uh, since Bitcoin has rallied up 3x from its low uh, and it's set a brand new all-time high, uh, we do have a situation on this chart now where for the first time ever, Bitcoin has set a brand new all-time high before its halving has taken place, which is highly, highly unusual, highly unusual. A lot of people, including myself, are saying that this is, you know, strange behavior. Um, it's I'm saying it's going to get punished, and it, I think it's already been getting punished a little bit because we've been trading sideways when we've been expecting fireworks. We've just been, been trading sideways for 50 days now, so that in itself is a punishment of time. Um, I think it still could get worse. You guys have heard my analysis at the beginning of this live stream. And by the way, uh, I want to give a shout out to those of you that are tuning live. We're up to over 1,100 viewers. So smash those like buttons up if you are enjoying this live stream so far. And double check that you'll subscribe to this YouTube channel, that you've got the bell icon checked as well, uh, so that you don't miss out on all of this phenomenal analysis that we're doing live here on this YouTube channel. Um, it's a nothing burger, one of you guys saying in the live chat. Yeah, I agree. It is It is a nothing burger. It's always been a nothing burger. Uh, and I think this time will not be any different. But again, we'll see. We'll see. I would be very fascinated if I'm wrong about this. But, you know, I like to manage expectations. That's just that's just who I am. Uh, now, here's a very, very interesting chart. Here's a very interesting chart that I'm actually quite hyped up about. Uh, you know, because if we if we run with the idea that Bitcoin has rallied up too much, uh, you know, it can be a little bit discouraging and, you know, it can make us think quite conservative in terms of where Bitcoin could end up going. But here's a different view and here's an objective view. It's to do with the two week EMA ribbon. If we take a look at the two week EMA ribbon at each halving that we had here, we were not at the maximum spread on the EMA ribbon, right? The EMA ribbon is a combination of a bunch of different EMA lines on this case here, in this case here, we've got the EMA 21, EMA 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, all printed on the chart, and the EMA 200, all printed on this chart. So what that allows us to do, because we have so many different EMAs, is that we can see across different time frames what the momentum is looking like for the chart. 
if for example over here we do not have a big spread there's not much momentum on the chart and you can see that very clearly because the price isn't really moving if over here that ema ribbon is actually expanding right we're actually starting to get bigger with our ema ribbon that tells us that we're picking up momentum in the market it was the same thing here we were starting to expand with the previous halving see the maximum spread that bitcoin achieves with its uh, ribbons is is something that looks a little bit like this it looks a little bit like this over here it looks a little bit like this over here we see this in the late stages of our bull markets these nice big big spreads here in the market yeah that's what uh that's what we're looking at when we're seeing a nice mature spread we did not have a mature spread at the beginning at, at the halving in 2016 we did not have a mature spread at the halving in 2020 we do not have a mature spread at this halving as well this is a two-week look at the halving and i think the reason that we don't have that is because if we really zoom out and look at what's going on with bitcoin's price action since 2021 you know, one of the ideas that we've been talking about on this chart, on, on this channel, is that we never actually finished the previous bull cycle. And I actually believe that. Even though this has been a very heinous bear market, and it's dropped down by a very large amount, and it's been, I mean, just absolutely destructive. FTX fucking collapsed. I mean, you know, there's always something big that happens. But by the way, everyone's talking about the blocks. We've got three blocks left here. Three blocks left. Oh, two blocks left. Wow. We are heating up, ladies and gents. We are absolutely heating up. Smash those likes up if you're excited for this. That is super exciting. Um, yeah, that is very, very cool. We've got two blocks left here. We are on block 839,998. The halving takes place on block 840,000. But I think that's important uh, to, to keep in mind uh with with this uh with this ema chart here we're clearly not super mature in terms of the spread here which like if you want to make an argument that we're early then this directly conflicts with it and i am inclined to run with this the reason i'm inclined to run with this is because we didn't actually see a big bull market last time we set an all-time high at 20k but we only got three times higher than three and a half times higher than that in 2021. So it just wasn't that big of a bull market. It just didn't go up by that much, which, you know, has led some, and it's a very small, like not many people actually subscribe to this theory. Not many people talk about this theory, but it is something that I think, uh, you know, holds true. It's something that I've been talking to you guys about on this channel I don't think that we ended the previous bull market. I think we're still in the, the same larger macro cycle. And if that's the case, then this EMA setup actually makes a lot of sense. So it's not something that I would be ignoring in this market. I think that's absolutely huge. I think it really tells us a lot about what could end up happening. Uh, and in terms of price targets, you know, uh, we, we talked a little bit about like 120K, 150K. You know, the reason I like 150K as a price target for Bitcoin is because you know, everyone always asks me, where do I think Bitcoin's going to go? And it's the most, you know, pointless question ever. And, and the reason it's a pointless question is because you have no fucking idea. I have no fucking idea. The other YouTuber who will tell you an answer has no idea. Everyone on Twitter, every Michael Saylor, every fucking, every person has no idea where it's going to top out. You just cannot know. You just cannot know. Yeah, you just can't know. Uh, and and now, now that we can get that out of the way, the next thing to understand is that when you're trading in a parabolic trend, when you're moving up like this, when you're moving up like this here, when you're moving up like this here, every additional one week of price action is absolutely huge for the market. In fact, you can see it back here, right? Look at this. Just two weeks of trading here, the price goes from, what was this? Like 13K up to like 20, you know? I mean, just within two weeks you know, less than that potentially. I mean, it, things happen, well, I'll just show you on the chart. Things happen very quickly at the late stages of our bull markets it, to, to the point where it's just not even worth speculating. You know, look at this, from this low up to the high that we set on this week, the price goes up by 
$1,500. That's a 77% increase, and that happens within one week. Here's another late-stage candle. You're up by 40%. It's a completely different price number. I want to I give you guys a sense of perspective on this, yeah? If we're looking at $150,000 for Bitcoin, and you get 40% above that, now you're at $210,000. It's a completely different price target. It's a completely different price target, and you produce that in one weekly candle. And it, you know, it's not just 2017. I gave you that because it's very easy to get examples, but we saw the same thing here. Again, any candles when bull markets are in full swing are absolutely huge. Here is another 35% bull market. This was back at the end of 2020, very beginning of 2021. I mean, this was a fairly mature market back then. Shout out to Nimith in the live chat, best YouTuber and realist ever. You know it, bro. You know it. McLuffin Lovin. If this guy says my name, I'll send him everything in my Robinhood account right now. Thank you very much, dude. I'm okay. You keep your Robinhood account. But McLuffin Lovin, shout out to you in the live chat. <laughs> we got blank in the live chat saying, I'll say your name. I'll say your name, bro. That's absolutely sick. Uh, two blocks left, 14 minutes for the Bitcoin halving. Very, very soon that this is going to be coming in. Very, very soon. That is the halving block. Absolutely sick. Super, super exciting stuff. But this is important to keep in mind. I really want you guys to know this because this next one year for a lot of you guys is probably going to change your lives. It's probably going to be a really big deal for a lot of you in your lives, for your family, for you know everybody close to you and yourself. Don't lose sight of what I'm telling you here. The late stages of a bull market, you will see big moves take 30% in one week. 30% in one week. We take a look at this on a two-week time frame. Again, just because that's you know what we were looking at, but you know, not for any other particular reason um, at all. But you know, just to kind of put things in perspective here, from this high, I'm sorry, from this low to this high, you're up by 57%. Again, if we just run with that 150k price target that I was talking to you guys about, 150k up by 57%. And now you're at $230,000. It's a completely different price level. That's why you just cannot speculate. And so when people ask me, I know you want an answer. I'm going to give you the long-winded answer I just gave you. But I'll also tell you, look, at a minimum, say something to make me sub right now. Dude, you make yourself sub to this channel. This is the best goddamn channel you're going to find for crypto analysis ever. Uh, so if that's a good enough reason for you, then great. And if not, that's fine. Everyone's got their own bad choices. Everyone's entitled to their own bad decisions. I understand. Uh, but, you know, we, we've got a very, very clear setup on this chart where you just cannot predict where that high will be, which is why my answer is always, well, at minimum, if we're being super conservative, Bitcoin's probably going to double, double its previous all-time high and maybe then some on top. So if the previous all-time high was 70K, 140K is the double, I'm saying 150 I'm guaranteed to be right, hopefully. I'm, I'm basically guaranteed to be right at a minimum. And then the other side of this that I think is really important, and obviously a lot of you guys that are watching this live stream are gonna you know, be in the same boat as me. You know, we're not gonna sell our Bitcoin, right? Like we don't really care. Like I, I don't really care. I'm in, I've been all in on Bitcoin since fucking 2018. Yeah, it's, that's six years I've been all in on Bitcoin now. One block remaining, is it? Let's take a look. One block remaining, the very, very next block. And we have got the Bitcoin halving. Very, very next block. How are we feeling in the live chat, guys? How are we feeling in the live chat right now? We've got one block left until the Bitcoin halving. Are we feeling excited? Are we feeling pumped up? Are we feeling underwhelmed? Are we feeling, are we feeling bullish, bearish, scared? Are we feeling anxiety? What's going on? What's going on, ladies and gents? Let me know in the live chat. How are we all feeling? Uh, but, you know, like I said, that that's why... You know, I, I, I just, I say what I say. Um, look at the memory usage here. It's just shot up here. Uh, just gone very, very high. Uh, this, by the way, there, there's a lot of interesting stuff going on, uh, going on for this block. I'm not going to embarrass myself by talking technical about it on this YouTube channel. But um, the first Satoshi, if I'm not mistaken, of the next block is, is going to be huge. Uh, it's going to be like a, a rare, like, you know, like the $2 note. Um, you know, it's going to be like a rare thing that people are interested in. So, and obviously everything's on the open ledger here. So, you know, there's going to be a lot of competition for that. Um, what have we got in the live chat? How are we feeling? 
Let's fucking go. Long and strong, King. Let's go. Hell yeah. Love it, Elliot. Shout out to Elliot in the live chat. Long and strong. <laughs> um, Turd Ferguson doesn't care. Toko Bjork mega pumped. Kenneth, nice, but my legs are shaking. Gregsky's chilling. I'm chilling, bro. I'm there with you, Gregsky. I'm chilling, bro. Absolutely bullish. <laughs> we, we've got some uh, phenomenal US drug culture use here uh, in response to the halving excitement. Good morning from Singapore. Shout out to our Singaporean viewers. Absolutely love Singapore. One of the best cities in the world. Um, excited. Somehow this feels like a festival. I understand. I get it. I get it. A little bit of anxiety from Russell. UK here, bro. Bless up. Shout out to my UK viewers. Shout out to Home Times. This is more exciting than the eclipse. <laughs> that is hilarious. 125x short. Yeah. So, you know, I think, yeah, definitely a cool time. Uh, you know, so, so that's why I don't give big price predictions for um, easy thumbs up for the video. Shout out to you, Kai, in the live chat. Shout out to those of you that have smashed those likes up for the halving here. We've got 1,300 viewers. Let's pump those likes up above 500 likes for this live stream here. Absolutely beautiful stuff. Um, got Huntington Beach, California. Chris Harvey living in paradise. Shout out to you, Chris, in Huntington Beach. Um, yeah, that that's why I don't give big price predictions. I just don't know. And I'm going to hold on to my Bitcoin anyway. So it just doesn't matter. Uh, if Bitcoin goes up to 150, great. If Bitcoin goes up to 200, 300, 500, 700, fucking great. Doesn't matter. What I know is that you are going to get it wrong at the end. I'm going to get it long, uh, wrong at the end. We're, we're both going to be long at the very end. We're both going to lose money on it. Yeah, let's let's get that out of the way. We know that. And as long as we simply make way more money by the end of it. Oh, there's the halving. There is the halving. There it is. Block subsidy has halved to 3.125 BTC per block. These last few blocks went very quick. These last few blocks went very quick. That is it. That is the halving. We've got fireworks across the screen. It's done. Just happened. It's halved. Yeah, you guys are super hyped up for this. Halftime complete. There we go. There we go. That is the halving. Someone's saying Spanish halving absolutely phenomenal stuff there that is the bitcoin halving there it is what's going on with the price let's take a look at the price absolutely nothing All right, is anyone going long just for the sake of like love for bitcoin doesn't look like it nothing happened yeah i mean yeah that's that's how it tends to go yeah here comes the bitgasm. <laughs> I love it, dude. I love it. Yeah, a little bit of a very, very, very small drop here for Bitcoin. Uh, the next minute after the halving, very small drop here. This countdown. Yeah, look at that. It just really sped up at the end. This countdown is still actually in the past. Uh, but mempool space here has, has taken this down. This next block is going to be interesting. This will be the first block with Bitcoin's reduced uh, reward. I was actually, I was watching Tone Vase's live stream. Shout out to Tone Vase. Absolutely love the guy. Um, and oh, there's the next block right there. That's the next block right there. Braylon's pool got this block here. Um, you can see all of the blocks that they mined. Um, so they must have been doing something interesting to get this block. And these last few blocks have gone very quick. Very, very quick. Uh, but there you go. That is the first block. Block 840,001. Block 840,001. With the brand new reward. That is the halving. So we've had the ETF take place around mid-January. We've had the halving take place mid to late April. The price is dumping a little bit. Not much, but it's down by 0.5%, $300. The price is dropping just a little bit. Um, 
So that's interesting. And of course, our key level, for those of you that are just tuning in now, our key level is this box at $63,000. If we fall below this box, I think we fall down to our macro support. If we hold this box, we could be in for a very fun ride up to the $66,000 price area. But that is the halving that has taken place. The immediate price action reaction is a very small drop, nothing significant at all. We're getting a little pump right now. Let's get really degen and look at this on the one second time frame. And let's see if that next block has been mined yet. Yeah, that was block 840,000. The block after that has already been mined. Um, so I was watching the Tone Vase live stream just before this one. And by the way, great live stream, but it's very technical. Um, they were probably looking at prices a little bit, but I was I was listening to it in the background. Most of it wasn't about the price, but it was interesting anyway. I like to I like to nerd out, geek out about these things too, and um, <laughs> celebrate us losing money. And they were talking about the rare Satoshi, you know, like the rare two dollar note and stuff like that uh, that that you get on the very next block. And uh, one guy, British guy, comes in and he's like, uh, you know, me personally. I would want to mine the block before the halving because that's when I get a bigger reward. Uh, and now you get half the rewards. So, and, and I thought that was absolutely hilarious because everyone, you know, was pretty hyped up about the, the first block after the halving. But this calm, almost like boring voice British guy who I, it wasn't boring, but I mean, you, you, he could come across that way to some people. You know, he comes in and he's like, I actually, I, I would have I would have wanted to mine the previous blocks because I got bigger, you know, you would get bigger rewards for it. And I was like, yeah, like, this guy fucking knows. Like, <laughs> this guy understands. So that was obviously funny. Um, but yeah, the, uh, the immediate price action, nothing. Absolutely nothing here on this chart. We'll see what happens over the next little bit. But I do believe that, um, you know, all these narratives like this time is different are not true. I don't buy them. I don't get hyped up by them. They're not the kind of things that excite me. Um, and because of that, uh, you know, it, it's, it's just not something that I'm super fired up for. How are we feeling in the live chat, ladies and gents? I think, I still think we go, I still think we go sideways. I'm just... Am I gonna read this live? I'm so bad at reading Hindi. By Tora Fall Hoke Pump Hoga Ese Lagrahe. He is saying small drop, then a pump. It's looking like that. Um from our fellow brown brother in the live chat. Shout out to the brown shout out to Brown Gang on this live stream. Um, feeling good still with our money yeah of course yeah Peter Schiff ready to pro proclaim it made no difference I mean it doesn't make a difference with the immediate price action it, it's the supply cho shock in the longer term that will make a difference but um but but the immediate I, I don't I don't think so I don't think there's much dang I was hoping to buy a Porsche tomorrow I me too bro me too I get it Arjun Prakar in the live chat asking am I Indian yes I am half Indian half Pakistani by heritage I've actually never been to either country um but um but that is my uh ethnicity born and raised in London Shisha standard for brown guy. You already know it, bro. You already know it. She's just sick, bro. Not even a sell the news. I'm sad. Dude, you know, it is what it is. It is what it is. But I think that um, we are looking at a situation on this chart where it, it, it's it's just, it, you know, what you want to hope for is that it's underwhelming. Because if it's underwhelming, we get an alt season, potentially, uh, and we get very explosive Bitcoin follow through, potentially much more than $150,000. So I actually think this is a really good thing uh, that we're seeing in this market right now.
wondering if some miners are unplugging. You know what, man? I think a lot of them would be. Uh, we've had the next block here mine, mined by Foundry USA. Um, I, I think I think a good number of miners would consider unplugging uh, because it's just going to be harder to make money off Bitcoin. It's going to be twice as hard unless the price of Bitcoin goes up. If the price of Bitcoin doubles, you make the same dollars now. So... Uh, must be interesting in your house when the cricket is on. Mate, it's always been confusing. I don't know who to bloody support. <laughs> but I don't really watch cricket anyway. But uh, yeah, it's always been a weird one. Mate, you think it's weird in my house with cricket? Imagine my parents, mate. <laughs> one's Pakistani, one's Indian. That was weird. Tell you what. It reminds me about year 2K, the year 2000, a nothing burger. Absolutely, dude. Absolutely. The things that will actually shock the market massively in terms of price are going to be the things that we don't expect. If we can expect it, it will be priced in. This is what you need to understand, ladies and gents, in this live chat right? in, 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 who, who are watching right now. This is what you really need to get with this market is if you can expect it, if it's an ETF which... Bloomberg is reporting on every day and you know like there's just a lot of hype around it or the halving is literally a date that we can expect and we can mark in our calendar years in advance and then months weeks days hours minutes in advance then it's gonna be priced in that's just how much like you're not stupid the rest of the market's not stupid well you know everyone's stupid but you know what I mean right like we're not that stupid Things are going to get priced in. We're interested in trading so we can preempt the future. And if everybody wants to preempt the future, we're going to manifest it. And that's what pricing something in means. So that's why I'm not surprised that we're not seeing anything with these events. The ETF, the halving, and so on. That's why, actually, what's very concerning is that if you fall for the hype, if you fall for the hype, you're probably falling for a lot of other lies too. You're probably, and I'm sorry to be the one to break it to you, but fuck it, we're here. We're live. It's 4.20 here in Dubai. 4.20 a.m. on 4.20, day of the month. We're live. Fuck it, I'll say it. If you're believing the hype on these kind of things, you're probably very gullible in a lot of other ways too. You're probably not even a trader who makes money. You know, I can very confidently... You know, you see one thing about somebody, you can box them in with a certain other thing, right? It, it, this this is how we do things. We generalize with people. It's just easier to do that. And because of that, uh, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, these things should not hype you up in terms of like expecting major price action uh, but because it, it's a symptom, uh, it's a symptom of a bigger problem. Uh, and, and the bigger problem is that, you know, you, you fall for hype. Um, we need to and if it's the first time you're hearing any of this then fair enough but if it's not then you've really got a problem but you we need to understand that these events are going to get priced in if we can put them in the calendar if we can expect them to be coming if bloomberg is reporting on them every day and all of that stuff uh you know then then clearly clearly uh you know traders who want to preempt the future are going to price it in uh, and I honestly think that is such a big part of why Bitcoin has gotten so high already uh, on a macro scale on this chart. I think one of the biggest reasons for that has been, uh, you know, that, that there's just been so many narratives that we could look forward to. That doesn't mean that we're going to stop rising, in my opinion. I still obviously think we're going to keep rising. But, um, you know, I, I'm not necessarily expecting fireworks with price action. For that. You know, I mean, that kind of thing happens with things that are not expected because then everybody reacts at the very same time. Um, so a few of you guys want me to look at the chart. There it is. We're on the one minute. When was the halving? When did the halving happen? Um, the halving was 13 minutes ago. So what time is it now? It is 22. So 13 minutes ago was nine minutes past the hour. On the daily time frame here. This happened right after the daily close. Nothing even happened with the daily close. That's kind of crazy.
We've got someone saying this guy is continuously pessimistic and negative. Dude, absolutely not. Absolutely not. I'm just realistic. And, and the thing is, is a lot of people will, will misinterpret this realism as being pessimistic. But those are the kind of people that just don't make money in these markets, guys. I'm, you know, I mean, again, I, I, I'm not, I don't have any like shame in, in, in breaking that truth to you guys. You know, like if, if you feel like this kind of stuff I put out is negative then it just means that you drink the Kool-Aid too damn much. You're just a victim of your own mindset, dude. That's the truth. Because if you're watching this channel, you're locked in with what's going on. None of this price action is taking you by surprise. Absolutely none of it. We do have a small pump right now. We do have a small pump right now from the low that we just set three minutes ago to the current price. We're up by $800, 1.2%. We are seeing a small reaction to this halving taking place right now about 15 minutes after the halving has actually happened. You don't want to be the guy that hears realistic shit and says that this is pessimistic. You're going to put yourself in a world of trouble, ladies and gents. Don't do that to yourself. That's dangerous. Again, it always comes down to the same thing I talk about on this YouTube channel. A lot of people are in the markets for emotional thrills. That is truly why why they're in the market. You ask them and they'll say they're here to make money. You ask them and they'll say they're here to buy a car, send their daughter to college, whatever. Everyone's going to talk shit. If you look at their actions, they're going to chase hype. A lot of these people just chase hype. If you look at their actions, they chase hype. And if they are chasing hype, they are showing you that they're not here to make money. Because if they were, they would make some fucking money. They are here to chase excitement. Those of you, those of us who are here to make money, we will reflect that pretty clearly with our actions. Small reaction to this pump right now. Very, very small drop down by $240. Still nothing happening. I mean, you know, we're, we're at the exact same price uh, as we were 30 minutes ago. Absolutely nothing. DH in the live chat is asking, wreck the shorts first and then the longs. You know, we've, um, we've been wrecking the longs a lot lately. Um, we maybe have already started to wreck those shorts. Uh, obviously, we, we captured a lot of those longs down here. They got stopped out. A lot of the shorts that probably piled in over here, they got stopped out up here. Now we're kind of in the middle. Uh, I think that liquidity hunt has already happened, which is good because I think it means that now whatever happens is probably more real true price action. Ladies and gents, I do want to remind you of the phenomenal offers available with the links in the description as well. When you do start trading using my link to Bybit, you are going to get up to $30,000 in free trading capital. You can withdraw any of the profits you generate with this money that they're going to give you. BingX is going to go four steps further, four and a bit, four and a half steps further with over 130 k in bonuses. And it's a no KYC platform. You do not have to submit pictures of yourself or your ID to use BingX. You can even trade traditional finance markets like Tesla, Apple, Forex, commodities like gold, indices like the S&P 500, all from BingX. Check it out with that link in the description down below. This has been a very, very popular exchange uh, for a lot of people. Uh, absolutely phenomenal. Great, great, great place to be in this market. Definitely check it out if you are interested. And Bybit remains number one as far as I'm concerned. Uh, but it is a KYC exchange. They do require KYC. You're not going to get your bonuses or uh, or your trading bonuses if you do not start trading. Uh, and, and in order to start trading, you got to do your KYC on Bybit. So check that out if you are interested. Uh, wait, where's the special guest? I actually don't know. Let me uh, let me find out. Let me give him a ring and, and see if he's tuning in. What do we? Have? You can just put that down. You, you can just put it down here. That's okay. Thank you. Um, looks like we might have sushi in the house here. So that's cool. Let me let me see if that special guest is actually joining us here. It's it's four thirty in Dubai, so anything is still possible, knowing how Dubai goes. I'm just calling him up now. We'll see if he uh, responds. He was supposed to turn up here, um, but in Dubai, nothing happens on time, which is weird because it's a very fast paced. It's funny, right? You go to a place like Dubai or like India or whatever. Everybody's in a rush. Nobody's on time. 
it's uh it's it's one of those things but um yeah let's see what we got in the live chat nelly is looking for fifty one thousand dollars for bitcoin i still think that's where we're headed i mean i would like to see that anyway shout out to blank good night i'm too tired for this completely get it bro thank you for tuning in Thank you very, very much. I don't know how much longer I'm going to be staying on live as well. Is my special guest Larry Fink? That would be cool. That would get a few viewers, wouldn't it? We are three blocks past the halving. I think everybody wanted to get their transactions in for this block. Ladies and gents, if we have any more uh, questions, charts you want me to go through in this live stream, then let me know. I have so much more analysis to go through with you, actually. I completely forgot about this. I have so much more to go through with you. I've, I've gone through about half of it, believe it or not. I've only gone through about half of it at this stage. Um, how did I survive the flood? Yeah, dude, the flood was pretty bad here, but um, survive, I don't, you know, I wouldn't really go that far. It was, it was quite survivable. Um, th there were very tragically... Uh, lives that were lost in Oman and here in the UAE. Um, it was actually disgusting that a lot of people were celebrating Dubai being flooded with uh, with the, it, and it was it was a natural disaster. That's that's what I think this was, and it was absolutely disgusting that people were celebrating it. Um, I can understand why a lot of people don't like Dubai, especially because of like influencers that are fucking absolute dickheads that live out here just they're absolutely horrible people that live out here um some people obviously most people are obviously just completely normal good people but some people are not great and they do paint this city with a bad image sometimes um but to celebrate a natural disaster anywhere in the world is fucking unacceptable i just don't understand it let's see what we got here i think we got some sushi go here yeah we do have sushi i don't even know what this is that looks like dessert holy shit that looks like um look at that what does that look like oh, that looks like crepe crepe sushi that's interesting what else have we got more sushi i'm so down for sushi that is that is absolutely sick Let's do that. It's been a long time since I've eaten as well. When was the last time I ate? Like eight hours ago. <laughs> wow, yeah, it's like 4.30. I literally ate eight hours ago. That's crazy. Um, yeah, let's uh, let's see what we got in the live chat here. But yeah, I mean, the flood, it was it was honestly fine. Uh, it, it really wasn't a big deal. Um, oh, well, no, nah, that's a lie. It was, it, was a, it was a very, very big deal. But... You know, I, I had a bit of fun with it. I went out, um, helped a couple of people. Uh, my friend hit me up. He's like, there's two chicks, two pretty girls that need to be saved. Um, and I was like, yeah, sure. I'll, I'm in for that, you know. Um, so, you know, we helped we helped a few people out, um, drove around the city. It was, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> Getting you guys hungry. Um Make a survey up or down in the next hours. Ladies and gents, I'm going to add a third option there. Neutral. What do you think will happen to the price of Bitcoin in the next little bit? You think it's up, down, or neutral? I want to know what your thoughts are in the live chat. Spam it in the chat. Don't spam it. Just write it once. I want to see where you guys are, where you, where you guys think this thing is going. I think you already know where I think it's going. I want to know what you guys think. Are we looking at up, neutral, or down for the next few hours? Did I rent a boat? No, sir. I didn't rent a boat because I had a Range Rover, so I didn't need to rent a boat. You don't need to rent a boat when you have a Range Rover, mate. You've just got the Range Rover.
Let's see what we got in the chat. We've got down, neutral, 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 possibly up, flat, which means neutral, up, down, neutral, <laughs> up, side. So everyone's saying, most people are saying neutral by the looks of it. There's a little bit of down. No one really thinks it's going down. It's, it's mainly either up or neutral by the looks of it. Neutral, sadly. Down seems kind of obvious, so I'm skeptical. Neutral. Yeah, I'm with you guys. I'm with you guys. A few people in longs here wanting the price to go up. Here's the thing, yeah. I don't want you guys to ever feel hope in the market. And the reason I don't ever want you to feel hope in the market is because your competition, they don't feel hope. They just take emotionless trades. And that gives them an edge over you. And the thing about trading is you need every fucking advantage that can go in your favor. If you ever feel like you have hope for a trade, you're doing 15 things wrong. That's in my experience. That's in my experience of trading for seven years, coaching over a thousand traders, um, working very, very closely with very, very many traders, turning people from losing traders into people that have produced life-changing sums of money, being me, trading for seven years, probably nothing. <laughs> I probably don't know what I'm talking about. But like I'm saying, if you ever feel hope about your position, there are a lot of things going wrong. The easiest way to remove hope is trade less often, trade with smaller amounts of money. Number two is going to serve you the best, trade with less money. You will kill your hope. You will never feel hope. You will never feel happy. You will never feel sad. You will never feel excited. You will never feel anxious. You will never feel proud and you will never feel disappointed. You will never feel anything. You will be emotionless and you will be a successful trader. That's my take. That is my take. Let me show you guys some interesting charts. Let me show you guys some more charts here. Um, interest rates. Let's start with interest rates. And now I really am in chill mode, yeah? We're at 4.30 a.m. in Dubai. We've been live for an hour and a half. The halving has happened. Now I'm very much in chill mode. Now I'm switching off. So if you don't if you don't like a more unprofessional stream, this one might not be for you. But I got my sushi. I got my shisha. I'm chilling with you guys. I'm switching off a little bit now for this live stream. So you will own nothing and you will be happy. In this case, you will be emotionless and you will be very fucking rich. And, and this is the thing is you just save your emotional highs for real life. You will make your money. And you will enjoy your life with your family, with your dog, with your friends, in nature, with a fucking car. You will send your kids to university. You will do everything you want to do, but you will not feel any emotion with your trading. That's the way you want it. In fact, it's the, we have a welcome video for VIP members. It's linked down below. In the welcome video, the number one thing I talk about in the welcome video is save the thrills for real life. Trading is not where you are allowed to get your excitement from. I say it point blank, just like that. You, you are not here to look for excitement, to look for thrills or anything like that. You are here to make money. They are two different things. They are two different things. Let me show you this chart right here. Take a look at this. This is the, these are the interest rates. Uh, and we've also got the previous halvings here as well. I don't think interest rates have anything to do with the halvings, but I know some people are going to ask, and that's why I'm putting it out there. By the way, if you guys are finding this live stream useful, entertaining, educational in any way, do me a favor and smash those likes up, and just double check that you are subscribed so that you don't miss out on all of this phenomenal content. Where are we actually in terms of subscribers now? We just passed 133k a couple of days ago. Smash up those subscribe buttons if you have been finding the live stream useful in any way, even if it was just entertaining. 
You're gonna get much more of it. We're not going anywhere. I'm planted here in Dubai, ready to give you guys more of this. Interest rates. So the thing about interest rates is it makes money more expensive. If interest rates are high, money becomes more expensive. Uh, that means there's less incentive to invest in the stock market. If money is more incent if money is more expensive, you can't borrow it, right? That's why it's more expensive. It's it's harder to borrow, um, and that that makes it you know less. Basically, uh, what a lot of people do is they will borrow money at let's say three percent interest, but they expect the stock market to make them eight percent. So they'll put it in the stock market. I know it sounds so irresponsible. This is what people do, um, and and they will pocket the five percent margin. But if the interest rate is five point five percent and you're expecting 8% in the stock market, but you know you could be wrong as well, now you have a lot less upside. So it just kills markets. It makes markets go up less. It makes markets less bullish. Um, and obviously, if that's happening with things like indices, stock markets, and so on, then obviously that's going to have a knock-on effect with Bitcoin because you and I are not deluded, and we understand that if we're looking at a situation where the stock markets are strong, crypto will be strong just because... People feel rich, and if you feel rich, you want to take on more risk. And on the opposite side, if you feel poor and you're losing money, you're not going to want to take on risk. And so you're going to be de-risking, and you're not going to be interested in speculative investments like crypto. Here's the S&P 500 with our previous halvings. Again, nothing super interesting, I think. Honestly, it does show that there's a lot of uptrends that come after the uh, after the halving. So if that, if you think that's interesting, then cool. To me, this is not a, you know, correlation doesn't equal causation. This is one of those situations. So I'm not really too crazy for this particular stuff. I don't really find it too interesting. Um, shout out to Pat in the, in the live chat. I've just seen your message on Telegram. I'm going to, I'm going to read through that when I'm done with this live stream. Thanks for messaging in. Um, but yeah, this is the stock market. Um, and, and you can actually see that typically during Bitcoin's halvings, the stock market wasn't doing particularly well, like on the short term. You know, we saw, you know, some some consolidation here, like just sideways here. We saw more sideways here in 16. We saw a massive crash. This was the COVID crash. And right now we're in a bit of a pullback. So, you know, for each of these halvings, the S&P 500 hasn't been in the strongest of places. The reason the interest rate stuff to me is interesting is because, you know, if they're so high, then eventually they have to come back down. Um, you know, if you've pressed the green button, Eventually, if you press the green button enough, eventually you got to start pressing the red button. And if you're pressing the red button, uh, you know, things are going to start coming down. So I think, you know, what comes up must come down. Interest rates can't stay high forever. Yes, there is talks that they might keep them high like this until 2025. But first of all, 2025 is only about seven, eight months away now. So um, we're, we're, you know, closing in on just half a year until 2025. Um, but but also, you know, eventually it would have to come down. And, and I think, honestly, I think overall, S&P 500 is in a really strong place. So, you know, if the interest rate starts coming back down, I understand everyone's got these doomsday narratives and like, you know, we're in a depression and you know, massive bear market and stuff like that. But that's not the kind of sentiment you've heard from me on this channel. I just don't, you know, I'm not really that interested in that stuff. I don't actually think that's what's happening. And I actually think that we've been performing exceptionally well overall for the stock markets and so on. And we've got a beautiful, I mean, this is kinetic potential energy, guys. I mean, this is very high. It has to come back down. And if it does come back down, I just think that it's got to be bullish for the market. It's got to be. That's that's my take. We see it come down massively May of 2020. And what happens after that? The fucking biggest rally for the S&P 500. You know? Transaction fees just went through the roof. Let's take a look at that. We've got, oh my God, holy shit, $120, is this right? Am I looking, am I reading this right? Tell me in the live chat, am I reading this right? $120 you've got to pay in fees for a low priority Bitcoin transaction right now, holy shit. If you're sending less than $120 worth of Bitcoin right now, you're going to pay more in fees. That's crazy. If you want no priority, it's a $1 fee. Obviously, you can use a low fee right now. And eventually, your transaction will get processed. But if you need your transaction processed soon, with a high priority fee, you're paying a $200 fee. Am I reading this right? Someone tell me. I must be reading this wrong. That's so high. 
But that's what it says. Maybe some of you can't read this. I know I got to zoom in sometimes. That should make it a bit easier. The powers to be will make interest rates go down before 2025. I agree. I actually don't think, you know, I mean, there's seven months left in this year. That's a long time for interest rates to drop. So I'm with you. The Zen of Gavin. I'm with you, dude. $200 in fees. What am I looking at? This is unbelievable. Nothing happening with the Bitcoin price. It's now been 30 minutes, half an hour since that halving has taken place. So that's the interest rate situation. Here's an inflation chart. I don't want to spend too much time on this chart, but here's a chart of the inflation. Again, there's no clear correlation or any like particularly interesting conclusions to draw from this, in my opinion. So I'm not gonna not gonna focus too much on this. Uh, in particular, let's talk about altcoins. Let's talk about altcoins. So Ethereum at Bitcoin's previous halvings has performed really well. Ethereum for Bitcoin's 2016 halving moved up by 12,000 percent. Bitcoin back here. Is it on this chart or this chart? I don't know which chart it was. I think the chart's gone now, but Bitcoin. No, no, it's here. Which one? It's this this one here. 2016, Bitcoin produces a 3,000% pump. Ethereum produces a 12,000% pump. 2020, what does Bitcoin do? Bitcoin produces a 700% pump. 2020, this is the 2020 halving. Ethereum produces a 2,500% pump. Now, if we're looking at things really scaling back, and if Ethereum only moves up by 400% after this particular Bitcoin halving, that still puts Ethereum at a $15,000 price. I think this is achievable. I think this is totally achievable. And I think you can actually see that with the Bitcoin dominance. If we take a look at Bitcoin's dominance, it's just been in an undeniable downtrend for a very long time. It's just trending down after every halving. The market gets diluted with more and more. Where are the fees now? $200. What? $200. $210. What am I looking at? This is insane. This is obviously going to settle down, by the way. If any of you guys are like worried about this, this is definitely going to settle down. It's going to be right back down to like, like $5 max. It's going to be very low. Someone's asking, what does it mean? It means the fee that you have to pay to send Bitcoin. At different levels of priority. That means if you... You pay the low priority fee. Your transaction will probably go through in in the next in in the second or third block coming up, which means somewhere between twenty and thirty minutes. If you want high priority within ten minutes, you're paying a much higher fee. That's what this means. But it's so crazy to say out loud, so I don't actually know if I'm reading this right. But I must be reading it right because it's very obvious. Um. But yeah, Bitcoin's dominance very clearly been trending down for quite some time. Uh, and I think that's going to continue. Which exchanges let you choose priority levels? In fact, in my in my experience, most exchanges do not let you choose priority levels at all. So um, th this is more of a like, you know, when you own your own funds, you have a wallet that allows you to, to choose the fee. Most exchanges don't actually allow you to do that. Timothy, you earned a new subscriber because I love how you look at these things. Dude, thank you so much. 
That's exactly what we're doing here. We are all about keeping it very real, very sober, very grounded. Because that's how we make money. On this channel, we are not here for excitement and thrills. We are here to make money. When you take that approach, you're going to end up thinking like this. There is no other way. Let's take a look at the fear and greed index. Another very interesting metric. We've got a reading of 66 on the fear and greed index. Last couple of uh, couple of days ago, we had a reading of 57. Shout out to Matt Stead. Well, I'm off to sleep, mate. Great stream. Thanks for the analysis. As always, you're very, very welcome, sir. Thank you for tuning in, mate. Am I Scottish? No, sir. But Scotland is maybe the most beautiful country on the planet. Or one of, for sure. It's just a shame that you guys got Scottish people there. But it's not that bad. Um, <laughs> Scottish people are weird, man. Scottish people are weird. I, I judge you guys. The way you guys vote, I judge you guys. The rest of the country's fucked too, but Scottish people, weird. But, um... Fahad waking up in the chat saying, I mean, halving happened, but nothing changed. You're right, dude. Nothing changed. That's it, man. Nothing changed. <laughs> the Zen of Gavin. I'm Canadian. I'm Canadian, but I won't admit it. <laughs> yeah, Canada's Canada's got its fair share of problems, hasn't it? Am I a Tory? No. No, not at all, mate. How can I be a Tory? They're all fucking scum, mate. They're all scum. There is no, like, there is no, you know, there is no better. They're both heavily left-wing, too. Gold at $2,400 an ounce. Look at that. Gold, uh, gold actually, yeah, gold got above 2400 very briefly. Now sitting at uh, 2390 This will reopen in about two days. Um... Vote green. I'm not even like I'm not even a fan of like any any major party in the UK. They're all so fucked. They're you know, it's just none of them are gonna work. Honestly, the UK just needs the US constitution and then they need to enforce it. <coughs> and then the UK would be fantastic. Scottish Pakistani here. The feeling is mutual here toward the English. That's brilliant. Shout out to John McQuick in the live chat. I think Farage has got his head screwed on with a few things, but I think he's completely dishonest and you can't trust him. I think he lost all credibility with the Brexit campaign. I will never forget, I was 15 years old when the Brexit vote happened and um, Farage was always, you know, very like 350 million to the NHS every week. He was fucking touting that claim at all, all the time. It was on his fucking campaign bus. Next morning, he's on Good Morning Britain when the, uh, when the election votes leave. He's on Good Morning Britain. The very next morning, he's like, never said that. Word for word, I swear, go search it up. He's like, never said that. He lost all credibility at that time. He proved to the British public on that day that even though he's got his head screwed on in a lot of ways, he's just the same as every other absolutely untrustworthy politician in the UK. He's just the same. He proved it. So I think, you know... He's among the best we've got, and he's still absolute trash. That's that's how I feel about Farage. You you just cannot mislead the British public that way, and then expect to keep your reputation intact. In, in, intact. That's my opinion on Farage. Uh, let's come back to the price here. I want to look at some altcoins with you guys. Let's start off with Ethereum. Ethereum seeing a little bit of a dump. We've still got that floor holding at $2,800. As long as that floor holds, we are good. If we revisit it, I think we may be collapsed below it, just like Bitcoin. Very, very similar situation. Ethereum's continuing to look weak against Bitcoin as well. Let's take a look at some altcoins. Start off with Matic. Trading under resistance. Consolidating. Not much I can say about this chart in particular. Cardano, trading at support, consolidating. Major support. You really want to see a big bounce off this level, but we haven't produced a bounce yet. So 
I don't know. It's not looking great. Did it say three hundred dollars? We're at two hundred and forty dollars now in fees. That is crazy. That is so high. That is so high. How do we have so much sushi here, guys? What is this? Even more sushi. I love this. I'm so down. I'm so down for more sushi. This is great. Okay, cool cat coding saying that's no error. The miners are in the red now after the halving. Has the halving been done? Yes, sir, it has. Yeah, I mean, the reward for the halving has been cut in half. I'm not getting any smoke from this anymore. That's weird. Must be a new head. Let's give that five minutes to heat up. Let's see what we got here. This is like a, uh, a salmon sushi by the looks of it. Look at this. They get so creative with stuff. And bear in mind, it's 4 a.m. In, here in Dubai. And we've got truffle. Is that going to focus? We've got truffle on the sushi here. That's just not what I would have expected. But um, truffle goes with anything, I think. In fact, I think truffle might even work in a cocktail. <laughs> That's how optimistic I am about truffle. Do I think the miners are flooding the blocks to elevate fees? I have no idea. I just do not know. I, d I don't actually know about this kind of thing. I'm curious on your thoughts of the guy setting fire to himself and talking about some crypto rabbit hole. Um, I saw the guy who did this for Palestine um, in DC. Was it like in front of the Supreme Court or something? I do not know about the guy who did it in front of Trump's courthouse today. I didn't look into it. Um, I think it's very, very sad um, that so many people feel driven to the point where they have to fucking set themselves on fire to make a point um a, a, to, to make a political point i think it's very sad uh, and i think it really tells you a lot about how desperate things have gotten in the united states across the whole world i don't know what exactly he was talking about but um sorry but i do think that it's it's huge. Um, I, d I don't I don't know what else to say though. I I don't really know how to comment on that guy who um, who set himself on fire here in Portland, Oregon. You can't even get sushi after nine thirty p.m., dude. Things in the U.S. close so early. It's weird. Like it's kind of just New York City. I was absolutely shocked in L.A. when everything shut so early. I was like, this is fucking LA. Like, this is Los Angeles. How is everything shutting so early? So I'm not even surprised about Portland. Um, everything's getting out of control. The answer is God. Honestly, Peter, you, you might actually be fully right there. You might, you might actually be fully right there. It's a kind of protest that's just faster. Yeah, and it, you know, it does definitely get a lot of attention. Um... New York City is the best. We open all day. Yeah, New York City is pretty cool, man. New York City is pretty cool. I don't like it though. Not my not not for me. Everywhere else jungle, yeah. Yeah, upstate New York is very green, very beautiful, very English actually. Upstate New York is very English in a lot of ways. Very weird. <clears throat> 
Guys, I want to wrap up some of this altcoin analysis and head off stream because I got all this sushi in front of me and I got a brand new uh, shisha head as well. So I think I'm going to go enjoy this. Um, let me go through some more altcoin stuff with you all, take a couple last questions. And then I'm probably going to be heading off. So if you have enjoyed the stream so far, smash those likes up. Thank you all for tuning in for this halving live stream. We're going to continue to do many more of these, don't worry. Uh, and of course... Check out the phenomenal offers link down below. When you do start trading using these links, you're going to get huge cash bonuses that you can trade with and the profits you generate are going to be yours to withdraw. No KYC, Bing X here as well. No pictures of yourself or your ID and over 100K in bonuses. Huge, huge stuff there. What is harder mentally, a bull market or a bear market? Wow, that's such a good question. The reason it's a good question, my initial answer was bear market, but the thing about a bull market is that if you sideline yourself, that's fucking painful. If you sideline yourself in a bull market, you're going to feel a lot of pain. They're both painful if you do them wrong. They're both very painful. Um, but I think overall bear markets are probably worse because they're slow as well. I think, you know, it's not actually the drops that people... Drops hurt. Drops will make you lose money on leverage positions and your altcoins will die and so on. And, and it's nasty. I get it. But I think for most people, it's time that really grinds them down. Because you're thinking of these markets like a human. By the way, we're so close. We're at 133,197 subscribers. We've got three more subscribers and we hit 200. We're 20% of the way to the next thousand. So if you haven't already subscribed and you enjoy this content, smash it up. We're live regularly around the big bits of price action. Around the clock, I don't care. I don't need to sleep. I'm here with you guys. Thanks for the live from New Zealand. Yo, shout out to New Zealand in the live chat. How many New Zealands do we have in the live chat today? I really need to go to New Zealand. New Zealand's like at the top of my travel bucket list right now. Like it's the next place I really want to go to. I think it's going to have to be later this year around winter. Well, your summer. Um... That whole part of the world, I'm, I'm just so fascinated by it. I actually may even want to move to Australia or something later on. Maybe New Zealand, we'll see. I know these countries have their flaws, but I feel like I'm able to see the, the beautiful sides of these countries. Australia right here. Shout out to the Aussies. I would grab my wife's phone and add some more subscribers, but she went to the store. When she gets back, if you're not there yet, I'll help you out. Dude, thank you so much. We've actually just passed it. We're at 205, 206. So thank you so much. Uh, but if you think your wife would enjoy this content, then feel free. We got South Africa in the chat. Pacific Northwest. I need to go to Mount Rainier. I'm so gassed up for Mount Rainier. I really need to go to Mount Rainier. I feel like that could be a life-changing trip. Tahoe is a life-changing trip. I had no idea about anything about Tahoe. And I went there and I'm not like, I'm not a spiritual person. I'm not even religious. You know, I'm just, I'm just not like, I'm not in that direction. I want to be, but I'm not. I went to Tahoe and for the first time in my life, I saw land and I felt land and I was like, this land is magical. I was like, this land is, there's something about it. Like, it's, it's not, it's enchanted, you know, and, it, and it's so weird for me to say, because I'm like such a, like science guy, you know, like I'm not really like in that direction, but Tahoe, you go to Tahoe and you look at the lake and the mountain backdrop that you, like if you stand on the Cali side and you look at Nevada, but maybe even the other side, it's it's crazy. It's cra I've never experienced anything like it. <laughs> Damn, all of y'all are in beautiful places. I'm in Wisconsin. Yeah, sorry about that, dude. 
We got Iceland in the chat. We got Morocco, Pakistan, Hawaii, Netherlands, Key West, and Wisconsin. Yeah, sorry, dude. <laughs> you messaged me on Telegram about a Rainier event. Dude, message me again right now. Message me on Telegram right now. I will, uh, I will take a look. I must have missed it. Does anyone know an Ava in Germany? Can we hook Eddie up with Ava? She ghosted him. Maybe maybe she just maybe she just changed phone numbers, bro. Maybe it's not that bad. We're with you, bro. If anyone can get you back in touch with Ava. I know if you're trying to find a Ava in a YouTube live chat, you're desperate, bro. I know I know it, bro. I, and honestly, I get it. So we're here to help you, dude. Pinoy in the live chat. I'm from South Lake Tahoe crazy dude south lake taco was so i i was i was looking i was standing on the west side of tahoe looking east and i was like this is crazy i need to go see this from the south so i went to the south and it's just obviously it's so long like it's such a long lake it's so big and i remember i remember being on the beach and we had to walk through a place with so many bear bins they had bins for bears guys you guys don't understand this my british viewers People who live in normal places, we don't have fucking bears. We don't have like crazy animals that will kill you. And in California, they have so many like bear bins, you know, like, and, and it's like a crime. You can't throw food away uh, if you do it improperly. It's actually a criminal offense. It's a criminal offense to throw food away, like normally, like on the ground or whatever. That's not normal, of course, but you know what I mean? You have to lock them up in bear bins. I saw them all over the place. I was kind of getting tripped out, but dude, Got to the bottom of that lake and it was crazy. That was a crazy lake. Yeah, dude, California's not the worst state in the US. California's not, man. What's the worst state in the US? It's not California, dude. It's not California. I don't care how bad policy gets in California, you've still got you you've you've still got the nature, dude. It's gonna, you know. You're probably thinking big cities, dude, but I think, you know, okay, you got the taxes and stuff, but take it from me. I'm in a tax haven. I'm here in Dubai. It's effectively been 0% for a long time. Um, taxes aren't everything. I've been on both sides. I've, I've paid socialist taxes in the UK, which are basically equivalent to the US. I've paid it all. And I've done here in Dubai. And and I'm 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 gonna tell you now as someone who's done both sides, and it's not it's not like Florida, all right. Don't give me this like Florida Nevada nonsense. You're still paying you're still paying federal tax. That's still huge. I've paid zero. I've been on both sides, and I'll tell you guys right now, taxes are not as bad as you think they are. If it means that you get to live with your family, if it means that you get to live in nature in a place that you love, where you've got your family, your friends, your life, it's just not. Like, it makes sense to go to a tax haven if you don't have strong ties where you are. Uh, and, and fortunately, or unfortunately, I don't know, but I, I didn't. Um, I, had, I had a lot of reasons to leave. Why does there have to be a worst? Yeah, good point, dude. Good point, good point. I'm with you, I'm with you. you thank you, you corrected me. There doesn't have to be a worst. And honestly, there might not be because I think every state in the US has got some beauty to it, for sure. Wyoming sounds terrible. Dude, Wyoming sounds like the best part of the US. Wyoming's probably the best state. I want to live in Wyoming. That's like a dream of mine. Just living in the forest. That'd be so cool. I'm not actually going to live there. It's, it's too it's too nothing for me. But 500,000 people in one state, that's crazy. Sammy, the difference is many people are stuck in the debt slave cycle. You're not in that cycle. Put you back into that cycle and you would hate it again. I understand. I understand. Yes, you're right. Um, but I'll tell you what. A lot of people are in that cycle here in tax havens too in Dubai. There is a significant uh, group of people that are in debt cycles here in the same way. Life ain't pretty here, man, if you're like that. It's not pretty here like that. It's not pretty anywhere in the world. This is a fact of life. Regardless of where you are, the more money you have, the better life you will have, generally speaking. You'd have to fuck up for that to not apply to you. Wyoming has Yellowstone, yeah. 
you know, so um, it it doesn't really say much, dude. I mean, I I get you and I agree with you, but you you got to bear in mind, dude. Like, I mean, you kind of you kind of touched on it yourself, but like, I came from that too, man. My parents didn't have money. I grew up on welfare. You know, I get it. I've been on that side. Life is always better. Doesn't matter where you are. You could be in fucking India. You could be in India, bro. And if you've got money, you're still living a at least somewhat good life. Tax haven's not everything. Tax haven's not everything. It is nice. It's nice to know that for half of the year, you're not paying for the government. And that the government's just funding wars and shit like that that you don't even agree with. That's nice to know. I, I do actually like that. But um, <laughs> Florida would be so much better if half of New York would go back home. Yeah, I'm sure Texans have been saying that about Californians too. Visit Pakistan, especially northern areas. You'll love it. And your parents too like visiting you, Pakistan. Yeah, I, I definitely need to see northern Pakistan. I'm very curious. It's my mom from uh, from Pakistan. Dad's from India. Um, yeah, I, I don't I don't like Florida. I've got a really bad relationship with Florida because I got chased by a fucking crocodile. So fuck Florida, not fuck Florida. But I take it back. But you know, I'm not I'm not down for it, dude. I think tax havens are the best way to get ahead in life and then you move to your family life location yeah i mean it's like you know if you're young like i said if you're young you're gonna have less ties in that sense it will make a lot more sense for you one sec all right um i'm gonna be heading off on the stream guys um Yeah, if, if you're young and you don't have strong ties like that, you're good. You know, you don't have to worry too much and you can you can just fuck off and go live in a tax haven and, and it's all chill. But most people can't do that. And and if and, and the reason I'm saying all of this is because I've spoken to um, to a lot of you guys who, you know, live out in countries like the US, um, you know, who um, who are very upset that you have to pay the taxes that you have to pay, especially because I get it. Like, the, where the fuck is the money going? It's so stupid. It doesn't even make sense. But um, I want you to know from, from someone that has been on both sides that it's just not the same. It's, 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 it's just not like, you know, the utopia that you think it is on the other side. Like these are tax havens for a reason. You're going to leave your fucking family behind. I mean, alligator, yes, but same thing, right? I, I, think, I think it's important. I think it's important to keep it in mind because, you know, you really like romanticize what the other side looks like, but... Um, that might not necessarily be fully true. You should actually go. I've got friends in the US who who went to PR to Puerto Rico. And they were like, what the fuck is this dump? I don't want to stay here. I get it, dude. I get it. I got people that came here from the UK to live here in Dubai. And they were like, I can't do this. I don't like Dubai. I get it. You know, it's not these places aren't for everybody. Some people are going to come to these kind of places and love it. They're going to thrive. For some people, knocking state tax off and just paying federal is enough. And they'll do Florida, you know, and, and that's good. You know, so everyone's going to be different and you've got to go out and check it out for yourself. But I know people who really get depressed over it. It's not like that. It's not like that on the other side. There are going to be downsides everywhere you go. <laughs> look what you all did now. You scared them off. Fees are going down now. Let's take a look at those fees. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're down. Forty-seven dollars low priority, seventy-six high priority. That's that's a lot more digestible. It's still very low. I'm, I'm sorry, it's still very high, very very high, but it is a lot more manageable. Um, let me see if there's another little bit of analysis I want to go through with you all before I wrap this one up. Solana at macro resistance. Take a look at this nice big top over here. Definitely clear macro resistance. Solana's not been able to get over it. If it does, big big pumpy time. Uh, it doesn't really matter what Bitcoin does. This coin moves fairly independently. So that's pretty cool. Let's look at some meme coins. Uh, nothing I can say on this. Nothing I can say. I'm not even going to bother. Arb holding very, very strong support. You collapse below this and you die again. 
Uh, that's already happened. Pepe. Let's look at Pepe. Consolidating in a downtrend. Never a good sign. Probably looks like it needs more downside to come. Phil. Oh my god, this is a bad chart. This is a very bad chart. Wow. Um, I mean, macro probably, like, if you believe in this token, then sure, but this is not great. It does look like it's at macro support, but not much I can say on Phil. These coins are waiting for Bitcoin to do something. That's very clear. Phantom's right in the middle of a massive range. I would not touch this at all. Um, she, same thing. Very dangerous by the looks of it. I wouldn't bother. Dot. Good support down here at the $5.86 level. This could be an interesting buy if it manages to get down there again. Right now it's at support. Still don't like it though. Wouldn't touch it. Binance coin usually traces Bitcoin pretty well. It's doing that right now. Facing resistance. That looks like a short. I wouldn't take that short. Risk is too high, but it is interesting. Uh, this should be fine actually. Yeah, it's really good. Let's look at XRP. Why are we looking at XRP? Let's let's correct that. Let's go off the XRP chart. Link. I'm very interested in Link. Holding on to that support. Really needs to hold on to that support. Um $13.67. Trade it up to that $15 level. Very, very nice. There's no easy trade here though, because look at these wicks. They're fucking huge. You cannot trade this. Um, spot buy, you know, definitely doable, but no leverage plays here, unfortunately. Uh, TRX. Huge support here. There's got to be a nice fib on this chart. Where do I draw this fib from? I'm going to draw it from here. 786 level. Resistance at the golden pocket. That's not a good look. Bouncing off the 382 level here. That's very good. That's very good. And look at that 618 level. Clearly very important for the chart. This is a good FIB. It's a good FIB setup. Very, very nice area of support for Tron here. Tron moves a little bit differently. I actually, I really like Tron. It moves a little bit differently to the rest of the market, which makes it a lot more tradable. You know, there are a lot of coins that really hug bitcoin very closely solana's not one of them for example link is not one of them uh yeah mo uh dude mo come upstairs i'm not gonna shout because i got the microphone on but let me let me text you i wanna i wanna introduce you guys to this uh to this guest i got here for this stream uh i want him to give a few last thoughts on this before i round it off shout out to crypto sam appreciate your insights bro Pre preaching the true facts you know it bro thank you very much it's a royalty pay it and move on to next i agree on the note of taxation you're the best sammy cheers from new york and florida thank you so much peter what's up man yo how you doing bro <laughs> welcome I could have texted you, so I texted you from there. Oh, that's cool, man. That's cool. Come in, come in. Here, take the seat. Do you want to take the pipe? Yellow, why not? Guys, um, this is Mo. He is a very good friend of mine here in the UAE. What's up, guys? And uh, he is a super good trader. I used to be. I stopped. He did stop. Yeah. We're, we're trying to maybe maybe get him back in. But, um, bro, I want to I wanna give you the screen for a couple of minutes. I've done, like, two hours of streaming. I'm pretty much done here. But, um... Here's a Bitcoin chart. If you want a naked chart, here we'll just remove all of these lines. I want you to uh, share a couple insights with the viewers. Give us some more macro stuff if you can, just to start. Macro? Yeah, just, just for a couple of minutes. Let me slide in on the other side, bro. Okay. I haven't done this for a while. Yeah. yeah okay, so sorry, sorry if I'm stuttering, guys. Let me grab that from you. Okay. So what is your opinion? So I think... I think we have spent way too much time down at this support. Right. I think previously we got big bounces, quick bounces off support. This time we're not producing anything interesting. 
to me, that price section implies we roll down and, and collapse below support. I think that's the highest probability on Which is start. approximately around 56K. Uh, 56, I think 52. I think, I think even high 40 is very doable. I mean, it is because uh, the way, as you know, the way I'm trading is mostly through, I check like some gaps and see which ones are gonna be filled. So these gaps could possibly be filled here, as you guys could see. Um, damn, I haven't used this for a while. You forgot how to use trading view, bro. Completely, okay, <laughs> uh, right there. A very big area. So you're, you're asking me in terms of macro, right? Yeah, just, just macro mm -hmm. to start, and then I wanna go a little bit shorter term. All right. So an FVG, there's an FVG here, but very, very- Oh shit, we're not showing the screen. Okay, sorry. Oh. Now we're showing the screen. Okay, yeah. All right. Very big support here. Look, there is a double bottom here. Very, very strong double bottom. These two wicks, if you look yeah. at it from the hourly, they're very, um, like it kind of showcases that it's going to move forward. And this double bottom comes in after the S&P continues to drop because of the Iran-Israel thing. Yeah. So that's strong because that means independent strength for Bitcoin. I personally, I think... I think it could go up a little bit. Maybe it's just gonna wick all the way down here, a very strong wick to a point where it's just gonna, uh, on the daily, it's just gonna show as one very big liquidity grab. And then we could see something like that where it's going to grab some of the liquidity around here, which is around 72K, because if you think about it, there's a lot of stop losses in this area. So you're saying sideways, basically. You're saying macro sideways. Yeah, I think it's gonna go sideways a little bit. So, right? so let, me, let, me, let me just very quickly steal this and show you a chart. Um, this, here's the, um, here's an interesting chart one sec. Let me pull this up on screen again. One sec, here it is. So this is the 26, 2020 halving. Yeah, we looks very the, identical. Yeah, we sideways into the halving. We've got that, mm -hmm. check, sideways into the halving. Coming from an uptrend, check, we've got that. 76 days later, we get a breakout, but 160 days later is when we get the real pumpy action. Which means we could be, so this one could just simply be a reaccumulation phase. Absolutely. And by the way, so an accumulation pattern, one of the Wyckoff accumulation pattern tends to be this way as well. It usually gives a double top and then it goes a little bit sideways and then it, it, it goes, uh, it starts to continue. Look. If you want the interactive chart, it's this tab. This one, right? Yeah. Look, I'll, I'll, I'll conclude it from my end, yeah? Simply follow the trend, right? So the trend is always like this. There's always gonna be a trend and then reaccumulation and then another trend and then a distribution and then a drop and then this is a redistribution and then it drops again and the cycle continues where here you have an accumulation, a rise, a reaccumulation, a rise, distribution and so on. And that's basically the cycle that everyone knows of right so when you look at it from a macro view then all what we're seeing here is that the trend is just simply upwards right and nothing is really indicating that it's going to go down especially at the fact that um this support is holding very very strongly so there's nothing really showing us much that it might drop very much other than the fact that this might be filled out which is this fvg now if we start breaking these areas and we start fitting and we start playing around here right if we start playing around here then there's a very high chance that we might continue downwards and because we are in a different range so and, and the 60k range becomes resistance again exactly so right now nothing is really showcasing from a, a macro view that this is a downward trend unless this very very important uh resistance starts to break very simple and then we basically start to follow the trend. We start following ranges. So we just draw, this is considered as one range. I would say from this point all the way to this point is one range and Sorry. and you just draw multiple ranges and then see and then start to trade them and bet against which range we're gonna end up with. 
I think we don't go lower than 40% below the all-time high, which is a uh, $44,000 absolute bottom. 40, 44. 44K is right here. I think that's the yeah. absolute lowest we go. That's the floor. And what I've been saying... I mean, I it's a very good this, point of control over there. As well. it, it's, it's beautiful. It's a yeah. huge point on the chart, just tracing that crosshair back. Look at all of the reversals that have taken place here, even this big reversal here. And also... Just to put this in perspective, because this panics a lot of people, Bitcoin literally traded here 70 days ago, bro. Yeah. Se 70 days ago, Bitcoin was here. It's not actually a big setback. It's just when, 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 the, when the market starts to go up, time moves faster, if you've noticed. Absolutely. Yeah. That's the good thing. You guys just, just follow the trend, my opinion. And um, one, of, one of the best traders in the world, actually, once told me on Twitter, I told you this before, if you guys are trading for in terms of um, long-term perspective, always DCA at every 30% drop and you'll always have a very fair entry point, no matter which entry point you're in. That's very smart. You get my point? It, it would have worked out 100% of the time. Yeah, this is one, this, I, used, I used to trade like this um, for, for my swings, but as Sammy knows, my scalps are more one minute time frames and five minute time frames. Yeah, let's uh, let's do that. And guys, if you've got any questions from Mo here in the chat, let yeah, me let know. me know. I have five minutes. If you guys have any questions, let me know, and then I'll give the mic back to Sammy. Let's start off on the hourly, and let's go down and see what you've got for the short term. And bear in mind, the halving has just happened as well, just like forty-five minutes ago. Yeah. Um, do you have other charts, by the way, that showcases before how the halving was before yeah. the last one as well? So we've got this chart here. This is your interactive chart. And we've got uh, this chart here of all the previous halvings. And it shows you 10,000%, 3,000%, 700%, and the time it took from halving to the all-time high, halving to all-time high. Okay, so it's very, very similar. Fair enough. As you can see here, by the way, we could see a very big drop here as well, which is, as you said, 40K, right? 40%, yeah. 40%. And um, could just grab that I, I big think, liquidity I think this drop point. Might actually been 50, though. This is logarithmic. But yeah, yeah. all of these drops here, these smaller ones, these are all 40% drops. We're on the two week time frame. It's very skewed. Mm. So it could basically do something like that and then continue. Which is basically what you said. Yeah. It could break one range trade in another range, take all that liquidity out, and then push back up. But overall, nothing is telling you that this is the end of the uh, trend. No way. Nothing. And by the way, um, can we open uh, CoinGlass? Um, yeah, you just, just let's, let's open a new tab. You can just type that in. I'll show you something. I think I showed you, uh, I showed you this before, right? Uh, I'm not sure, bro. You showed me coin, coin glass, yeah. Yeah. Let's go to the um, data. Wow, this changed. All right. Two-year multiplier. Usually, look at this, right? Can we can we just zoom in just so the viewers uh, can see it? One sec. Can you guys see it? There we go. That should be good for the viewers. Okay. All right, look at this. Every time it, it is under the two year moving average, right? It's considered as an accumulation. And every time it goes to the two year moving average X5, which is times five, is where it is considered a, uh, a distribution, right? That's huge, yeah. So we haven't hit it yet. Exactly, so look at this. This happened, we hit the two year moving average. This is when it was all the way to, uh, when it went to 69K. Remember that? Yeah. It dropped and then it went here. What's interesting about this one, because this never happened before, right? Um, th sorry, this is when it went to all time highs, sorry. Okay. What's interesting, this never happened before previously. It always used to go all the way up, go to the two year moving average and then drop, do an accumulation under it. And then it goes back up as you can see here. So now we're in the middle. And reaching the two year moving average X5 is around 150K, by the way. 
So this one, I'm, I'm following it from a very big macro perspective and it showcases that you might, we might have a high chance to reach these big areas. That's actually the exact target I was talking about on this live stream. 150K. Just by sheer chance. I was looking at the same level. Yeah, it's but, right but there. But there's no, there was no like technical basis for that. I just said double the all time high, add a bit, you're at 150. I was like, that's a conservative minimum for this bull market. Yeah, fair enough. It's very fair. This is this is what I would say. Maybe a little bit up where a very big liquidity grab could happen. Uh, Crypto so Sam in the live chat is asking if I look at order flow and candle ticks. I don't personally like exo charts. I think it's great data. I used data. to. Yeah, Mo used to do it a lot. Right. It's not really my scene, but I think it's great. It's just a little bit complicated. What are you smoke, smoking on, Mo? I'm not smoking anything, unfortunately, man. <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> Chart always move. Any any other questions before I leave, guys? Very nice to meet everyone. Thank you so much, bro. Thank you, bro. But if anyone has a question, let me know. Mo, do you want to promote any socials? Um, Mo Rauf on Twitter. M O E R A O U F. Let's type that in here so people can uh, can see how you spell it. Just just type it in as a ticker. Oh yeah, here. Yeah. I just started this Twitter, guys. So feel free to follow it. Thank you, bro. Thank you. Thank you. So, guys, uh, that is going to be it for me on this live stream. Uh, the website that Mo was just showing is called Coin Glass. Wow, we've got the sunrise coming in, bro. Holy shit. It's only in Dubai where your friend will pull up at fucking 5.30 a.m. <laughs> and this is when you start hanging out. But um, thank you all so much for tuning in wherever you are in the world. Smash up those likes one last time. Take advantage of the phenomenal offers linked down below. You get these bonuses when you start trading. It's free capital that you can trade with. Profits are yours to keep. Um, Pat Cap in the live chat says, Mo, you need to come on some more. I agree. Inshallah. Inshallah. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. I'm going to see you all in the next one. Have a great rest of your day. Make sure you do subscribe and check that bell icon so you get notified of all this fantastic content. And thank you all for uh, smashing us through 133.2k shout out new zealand no lotion needed all right guys cheers thank you all so much i'm out peace nice one man i was dead <laughs>